For those of you watching along at home, I skipped through the intro. Gamma is a giant robot that supposedly Wily was building with light. We were retrieving the different parts so that Gamma could be built. And now Wily has Gamma. Like, surprise, Wily's a bad guy.
coming up.
sie aber da oben ist noch.
say we're at 200.
This has been a long stream so far. I'm going until 10 o'clock.
Let's do that again. <laughs> Cute.
top spin is a vulnerability here. I really don't want to have to put energy into the top spin. Uh, I guess I have to. I wonder who. <laughs> this is interesting. These little ID cards for people from previous games. tells you what they were actually intended for. A robot that was built with a parka. <laughs> Poor roll.
So I'm going to close this game, start up Mega Man 4, and I'm going to run to the washroom because I have to. I shall return. intro sequence has been played already through, but just in case it is not, I will let it play. Powerful new Mega Buster! Now we gotta go and defeat Dr. Cossack, because obviously it can't possibly be Wily yet again. Somebody's calling me. Rebecca, that's where you're the call. Hello. Hi. Hi again. Uh, let me get you on the feed. Here we go. I have just beaten Mega Man 3 and just nice. starting Mega Man 4. That means that uh, we made another $25. Hooray! Woo! Oh, I just added up how much we, how many donations we've got. Um, 
Uh, but it's downstairs. Mm. No. <laughs> I would say it's $225, and that does not ex include Alex's um, amount. Which is still floating. Uh, right now it's right. at 75 so We'll cool. see whether or not we can make it 100 before the well, end that of this. <laughs> that means that we're at, uh, we're at $300 for today. Very nice. That's that a is, pretty good amount. That is not a bad haul for all things considered. Well, and we've got, what, another three hours to go? I think I can get through Mega Man 4 in that time. Nice. Very nice. Which will make it <laughs> a grand total of four games that I'll have played through today. <laughs> I did do a bit of save state use, but, I mean, I'm not... Uh. I'm not upset about that. Although <laughs> nobody else is either. This game is ridiculously hard, so... Yeah, no, it's just, you're doing a fantastic job, and uh, I applaud you, because this takes a lot of patience and uh, hand strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's quickly waning, too. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, am, I do like to play games a lot, but, you know, I've moved on to more like the Wii, um, but always, I've always been a Nintendo person, but... Um, you know, I'm playing Skyward Sword, Zelda, and my thumb, my m walking, you know, the, like you use the left thumb to maneuver the nunchuck to get the uh, guy to walk. I actually and my... haven't played Skyward Sword. Uh, well, I haven't played through Skyward Sword. I have played like the first opening sequence twice. Yeah. So. Uh, I've, I've beat it a couple times, um, and there's a, like, they have these um, spirit realm things that I really love to do, and they're they're pretty challenging. I mean, they're not like horrifically challenging, but they're challenging. It's the, pr the most challenging part of the game, other than bosses, maybe. And um, my kid is like, "Mommy, will you do the spirit realm for me?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, you get you know your hand gets tired and whatever. I actually um, I fell in a bouncy house when I you know was a little intoxicated and hurt my thumb. Oh no! And I really wanted to play, and so I was like, "Well, how am I going to do this?" Because it was my walking thumb, and so I got my husband to do the walking part, which he's not a gamer at all. I mean, for as much time as he has spent in front of computers in his life, he's just not a gamer. And so I'd be like, "No, go there." Yeah. <laughs> oh, he just didn't do very well at all. <laughs> it was um clumsy at best. <laughs> that is kind of hilarious. I'm kind of picturing you like a, a three-legged race. Yeah. Race. Like a three-legged three race with a um, language barrier. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it took a little bit. Every once in a while we'll get him to play a game with us. Um, and so, like, we would play uh, Mario Kart. Which was just hilarious because you just go over the edge over and over and over and over again, you know, and we're done and like off to the kitchen to get a snack and he's still trying to get past, you know, like the first lap. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. We're like, never mind. It's just, not worth it. Just you get a buy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, we're done, you know. You can go. The two of us will continue to play, thank you. <laughs> so um, I can't stay for very long because we are gonna head out to dinner. Um, we have company. Okay. If, for those who weren't uh, around when I was on before, my mom and stepdad are in town. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to go to dinner. But I wanted to uh, fulfill my um, promise to come back and talk about something about the activities. Like, uh, let me go through quickly. Actually, let me bring up my list because I have so many things going on that I don't even remember them. I really appreciate you coming back, too. Uh, it was getting kind of lonely and, and dark I and scared. <laughs> I wish that I could spend more time with you because I'm having a blast talking well, to you. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> but it just, this is coinciding at the wrong time. Now, if you'd done it yesterday, it would have been <laughs> fine. Okay. So, we've talked about that we're having the prom. Oh, let me... Let me talk about the prom for a second. Actually, no. Let me go back. 
Okay. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> yes, okay. So uh, what we talked about last time was um, the food pantry for those who need food and can't necessarily afford it. Um, we're talking about the prom outfit closet thing where um, we're going to get people to donate um, dance type clothing uh, so that other people who don't have dance type clothing can come and get dance type clothing. Um, we're having a blood drive again as we have had, I don't know, I don't know how many years it's been, but we're going to have a blood drive. Um, we're definitely going to be donating blood again, uh, trying to anyway. I have, like been, I have been banned <laughs> as an organizer from giving blood at Skepticon <laughs> because I did that um, at SK7 and, um, you know, as organizers, we're running constantly, we're hardly ever eating, I'm, you know, chugging Pepsi and caffeine as much as I can um, and no water, <laughs> of no. course. Um, and so I go out there and I give the blood and I come back and I'm like, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes later or something, I'm like, I don't feel very good. <laughs> like, I need to sit down. And our stage manager at that time, Blythe, is um, a nurse. I want to say she's a triage nurse, in fact, um, or an ER nurse or something like that. I'm like, what? Uh, I think my pulse is like 125. <laughs> like, oh no. This is a problem. She's like, okay, you need some water and you need to sit down and you need to not do that again. So, um, yeah, I'll arrange the village drive that I'm not allowed to give. Um, okay, so we're having a community board, which is just basically a, a, a message board where people can leave messages for each other, try to get a ride somewhere, whatever they need um, or want to say. If they want to say something nice, leave a poem leave a picture, whatever they want to do, they can do it there. I'll make a point of writing something nice to people <laughs> on it. Um, so uh, Friday night we're having a game night and we had, at SK7 we had the game night and we were like, oh, you know, a few people will show up. So we had it in this one set of rooms and it overflowed, like it completely <laughs> stuffed that room. It overflowed into like the um, landing area outside of it. it and down the stairs and into the pool area. I mean, we had so many people who wanted to come. So then mm. last year we were like, let's do this smart. And we put it into the room where the um, where the dance is. And that was much better, a lot more room. So we're gonna do the same thing on Friday night. And then um, for those people who want to socialize but don't wanna go to the dance on Saturday, we're actually gonna have a second game night that won't be, um, it won't be like sponsored, it won't be very, you know, like we aren't gonna have a lot, people are gonna have to bring their own games basically. But it's gonna be, so the dance is in the Paradise Ballroom, which is, you know, kind of the smaller. And then the main ballroom is right next door, that's where we have all of the talks. So the we're gonna have a second game night um, going on Saturday night in the main ballroom. Okay. So people can, you know, go into, go and chit chat in there, they can go back and forth between the dance and the, um, the game night, or you know, they can they can just stick themselves at the game night all night. Um, but it's just, just another way. The game night is like board games, card games, things like that. Any tabletop, yeah. It's not. We're not bringing you know Mega Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all I've had enough of Mega Man by the time this day is over. Um, not yeah, playing, it's, not playing it for a while. <laughs> it's not video games. It's all tabletop type things. Um, I'm trying to get a sponsor. Um, somebody who has a lot of games last year, it was done by um, Changeling Games, but they have closed up shop. Um, but I'm trying to get in touch with him again to see if he wants to just bring his own personal stuff or whatever it is that he has. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from him, otherwise I'll go and find another sponsor on that. Um, that's for Friday night. Saturday night's just a kind of free-for-all, um, whatever people bring. So I'm going to be making sure to put a call out that, hey, if you want to do this thing on Saturday night, you got to bring your own stuff. Um, but the benefit is that for those people who've been to the Oasis before, you know that the pool area is incredibly loud because they have a fountain and yeah. it's this huge atrium and it's echoey. And if you whisper everybody for like, everybody can hear it. And it's just, it's not very conducive for conversation. No. Um, so by having, having this, area where people can socialize that's 
it will be close, you know, next to the dance, but there's enough of a barrier, and there's a huge, you know, wall between the two rooms, um, and we'll have the tables on, like, the other side of the room. You'll be able to maybe hear the music, but you're not going to be bombarded by it. You'll still be able to converse or whatever. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Um, we are... We have an extra room. The conference center has a whole bunch of rooms, um, and we actually have an extra one. And we have had um, people in the past who have wanted to have a place to meet with their group. Um, there's one group that wants to get together and have like a music jam thing. So with this extra room, I'm calling it the community room. We're going to have an informal, you know, sign-up sheet outside the door or something along those lines. I haven't fleshed out the details yet, but. Groups will be able to um, reserve the room for, you know, having a having a um, music jam or a you know meeting of the whatever whatever their group is. Or um, I was I was thinking I was like, wow, you know, it would be really cool to have um, like an AA meeting, you know, available to our attendees. Um, yeah, yeah because be cool. it would be great. And then I was like. I wonder how many of our attendees would actually be using AA as a as a thing, right? Because it's a very um, spiritual, or re religious. I guess not all of our attendees are atheists. No, but the, anyway, the vast majority are. But... Yeah, but anyway, it just like I was like, wow, those two things don't go. <laughs> you sort of paused halfway through the word and kind of looked like you're in the middle of a sneeze. Aww. Well, as soon as she comes back, I'll bring her back onto the call. lost you in the middle of a word that looked like you were stuck halfway through a sneeze for like 10 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, I, I, you know, last time I was telling you about the router issues that we're having, I think we just had one of them. So uh, I actually turned off the Wi-Fi on my phone so that uh, hopefully that won't happen again. You're using the, so. hopefully you've got an unlimited data plan. <laughs> I have a pretty big data plan. Okay. So you appear to have frozen. Not too again. About... Oh. No way. Am I frozen? Okay. You were for a brief second, but now you're back. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, if there's any weird noises, it's my cat who is playing with every cord that I have attached and wants to be pet. So sorry about that. Huh. But she's really cute. Hello. Look, Minna, say hi. I can't really pay attention. I'm jumping <laughs> over. <pits. laughs> That's all right. She won't stay still anyway. All right, so um, oh, I have like oh. five minutes left, so let me... Okay, so I wanted to say one thing about um, prom real quick, is that, you know, I make all the centerpieces and um, they go with a the theme and nobody... It seems like a lot of people are like, wait a minute, you have a theme every year? Yes, we have a theme every year. Mm -hmm. um, this year, because it's SK9, so it's S. K9, as in dogs, and SK9 mm. lives, as in cats. So we've got dogs and cats and dinos all living in harmony. So dogs that's what the centerpiece. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. With, <laughs> with dinosaurs. With <laughs> yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah. And uh, so that's the that's what the centerpieces are going to be. There's different scenes of dogs and cats and dinos living, or you know, in the same surroundings. So. <laughs> People might think that it's a little bit strange, but I've been having a blast building them. Um, and That's the uh, hopefully, part, really. yeah, hopefully they'll go, they'll be popular and um, uh, get a lot of raffle tickets, a lot of people buying raffle tickets to try to get them. Okay, hold on. I have to get my cat away from here. <laughs> okay, I'm someplace where I won't die if you wanted to show me the cat. Oh. <laughs> All right, so there she is. 
Oh, you're sweet. Look at your little white beard. <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, she wanted it down. Um, and now she wants to drink my water. Get out. <laughs> um, she, so that is Midna. And then uh, we actually oh. adopted three kittens all at once with Midna, Tetra, and Pedo. Of course and you do. <laughs> does that? Yeah. Yes. Those are Zelda characters. They are well Zelda done. characters. <laughs> well um, done. Yep. Yeah. We um, we knew that we were going to get a black cat because we are tired. We have a white cat already, and we were tired of you know having to get white hairs off of all of our black clothes. So we were like, hey, let's just get a black cat. And oh. Oh, hey, this is not doing much Am I back? Okay. You're back. Sorry, I got I got a phone call in the middle of all that. <laughs> well, so it, if you have to go, you have to go. I understand. It's no, okay. it's my ex-husband. He can wait. <laughs> Fair enough. You can wait. Yep. Screw that guy. I don't know who he is, but <laughs> <laughs> totally screw him. We don't need him. What else did I have? To talk to you about. I think that's actually it. I mean, a little bit more about accessibility. We talked about that we're having closed captioning. We are not having um, sign language interpreters at you know live at the the venue. Um, we weren't able to get the ones that we had last year. And to be honest, our our budget is you know really tight this year. Um, if we we would love to have them. Um, and if we can find them and if we can afford them, then that would be great. Um, just at this point, that's something that we did have to give up since we do have the captioning. Um, but one thing we did find out that's great is um, we're going to have a URL set up where people can go to, and you can actually get the captioning on your own device. Ooh, uh, that's great. Screen, so people can have it on their iPads or their phones or their whatever laptops. Um, in front of them instead of having to try to read it on the screen. So that will be good. Um, I am trying really hard to get childcare set up. Um, it, I mean, I don't want just anybody showing up and being like, yeah, sure, I'll take care of kids. Um, so I want to make sure that they are somebody who have been, um, you know, background checked and things like that. Um, I may not be able to pull it off just because I can't find somebody who's willing to, to do it. But we'll try. Um, we have the red lanyards for people who don't want to be in pictures. Um, they, you know, some of some of our attendees can't be out about their atheism or whatever, um, or their identity. And, and since Skepticon is really um, accepting and open of everybody, people feel safe of of expressing an identity that they don't feel safe expressing at home um, and we want people to feel safe and so we have the red lanyards so that um, those people are identified as ones who don't want their pictures put on social media um, or their name released um, you know out into the, the wild as being at Skepticon. So we'll have those. Um, we're having the communication stickers again and not Good. only are they they're colored um, I think the same as last year blue circles Oh, blue circles. So we have shapes this year too, on top of having um, good color, and they're bigger. So we have blue circles, yellow triangles, and red squares. Um, so we've got color and shape, um, so that people can identify that better. Um, I do want to point out that a a troll who was entirely disinterested in accessibility uh, suggested that colorblind people might not be able to read the particular linear colors, or the dot colors, and that's why the shapes apparently came about. Um, I like right. the fact that we took criticism that was meant to be facetious. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying we, I know it's entirely you guys, but I mean, I was talking to, to Warren while, while this was going on, and so I kind of take credit. I was like, yeah, that's kind of a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and it was a great point. I mean, um, we um, we had criticism last year. We talked about having green circles, or having, um, we had just round circles. And so we talked about having um, green, yellow, and red, right? Stop sign colors or stoplight colors. Um, because they're, you know, we all know the stoplight colors as go, caution, and stop. Right. Um, 
But then people, you know, again, it was the trolls being like, well, what about the red, green, colorblind people? Uh, you know, they aren't going to be able to tell the difference between the two stickers. And we were like, hey, you know what? That's totally true. And so we switched it to blue circles for the instead of green. So we had blue, yellow, and, and uh, red circles. But yeah, this year we um, added the shape, and they're also bigger. Um, you know, they were pretty small on the um, on your badge last year. So they're about, I think, about twice as big. Um, and on top of that, we also, I've, um, I'm not part of the art team, but I'm pretty sure that we're having a designated spot on, um, sorry, my cat is trying to get petted. That's why I'm all <laughs> shaky. Oh, she's bonking my hand. Um, oh, that cat. That cat is yeah. adorable. Oh my gosh, she, I love her so much. Uh, anyway, um, we're having a designated spot on your badge for um, both um, the stickers and your name and pronouns. Um, whereas last year, I think we had a small spot, or we were having, I can't remember, because my brain fries at the end of Skepticon. It was like uh, a, a write your own spot thing. Yeah, like but it wasn't very big, or there was something that I was, you know, that there was critique of that we're addressing this year. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's. I think that's all I've got on the attendees list. Oh, we're gonna have um, charging stations in the grand ballroom again, so people don't have to try to find a plug to recharge their phones and tablets and things. Um, I love that last year. That was a great addition. The other thing that people liked um, that I put in that um, you know was not um, like some people were like, "Why are you doing this?" Was the tables at the back and. Um, they were full all weekend. I mean, there was people sitting at the back at those tables so that because they could have their laptops in front of them and not, you know, in their lap. Mm -hmm. um, or just sometimes people are just more comfortable sitting at a table than sitting just in a chair. So anyway, we're going to have more tables because they were full last year. So this time we'll have more um, available for those who would like them. Excellent. And other than that, um, oh, and the fidgets. We'll have fidgets. Oh. We'll have new fidgets. So. There was a Kickstarter for a fidget cube that I saw mm -hmm. that I thought would have been perfect for... for I, I know that you had fidgets that you were giving out last time that were yep. they were basically just little uh, toys, little doodads that you could play with. That fidget cube is amazing. It's got rolly ball, it's got switches that you can toggle. It, I know. Yeah, um, Lauren actually sent me a link to that, and if they weren't $35 each, I would totally get a few... <laughs> Oh, yeah, to have ooh, yeah first um, walk away that's that's not an inexpensive thing that's, right that's, that's a game that's and a half a two dollar <laughs> that's not the two dollar pack of coils for 12 of them or whatever um so yeah and um you know I, I i learned a little bit of experience from seeing what was going on with the fidgets from last year so there are a few that will not be making a reappearance because you know after people handle them for a while they get gross <laughs> so yeah the, the squishy ones were not yeah quite, uh, not yeah a good idea. so we'll be re uh reevaluating some of our fidgets we'll um we'll be sanitizing and cleaning the ones that we are having returning and then we'll be buying new ones to replace the ones that we are having to throw away <laughs> you are adorably insistent <laughs> oh my god this cat i tell you I, like she's small she's really tiny she's about they're about four months old, and she's like half the size of her brother. <laughs> um, she very obviously was the runt of the litter. Aww. They were found when they were five weeks and then fostered um, until they were old enough to adopt. And we adopted them the very first weekend that they were out in a, you know, in a adoption thing, whatever they call the event. And uh, we were only going to get two, and my then my husband was like, "But I can't split up a family, so now we have three. Oh my God. <laughs> And our 14 year old cat is like, what the hell have you done to me? <laughs> he's, we've had them for six weeks, I think now, and he's still um, trying to get used to life with infants <laughs> around. But everybody's getting better. They're attacking him less. He's <laughs> learning how to fight and it's all good. Oh, Everybody wow. will love each other eventually. That's that whole breaking in period is always so fun with new cats, like trying to teach them not to attack each other or 
trying to let them get acclimated to one another. Yeah. Well, of course, the, you know, they're little kittens, and so they've taken over every spot that he ever thought of his own. You know, his cat tree is no longer his. His, you know, just his normal spots for sleeping are just not his. Um, so we've tried really hard to make that we have a couple of spots available to him that they are not allowed to go into. Um, so one of them's the laundry room, and we made the mistake of um, feeding Squish, the older cat, in the laundry room when they first showed up because um, the boy cat kept stealing Fado. He kept stealing um, Squish's food. So we were like, okay, we'll put Squish's food in the laundry room. Well, now he won't eat outside the laundry room. So we have to put him into the laundry room a few times a day, and then we forget <laughs> about him. So it's like two li hours later, we're like, we're squish. Oh crap, he's in the laundry room. <laughs> so now we have a rule that you have to set the, the microwave timer so we don't forget squish in the laundry room again. <laughs> um, luckily he's pretty chill and he'll just, you know, take a nice long nap in there and he probably prefers it than having a <laughs> fight with the kittens, so it's all good. Um, and then our bedroom closet, he'll, um, he'll get to go in there and the kittens are definitely not allowed in there because we'll never see them again. Um, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so anyway, that's that's my cats, so, um, I think that's all I have for, um, for Skepticon stuff, just off the top of my head, and I actually need to go take my parents to dinner. That sounds great. I'm very um, happy to have had, had you on. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to do this whole thing, and I hope we make you more money. Well, thank you for doing it. I'm sorry that your hand will suffer probably for days. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> yep, it's... Uh, ice. I, I signed up for this. I knew what was coming. <laughs> I know you've done this before with other <laughs> games, but you just did one for Geek Girl Con not that long ago. So. Yep, just and, did the Ninja Turtles but, uh, games. You know, Managed yep. to get through that a lot quicker than I, <laughs> I promised you, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of happy about the way that the Geek Girl Con... Uh, thing went, though we didn't have anybody on Skype, so I don't know. Mm. Uh, one or the other, uh, that one I could get onto YouTube in one chunk. This one, no way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Um, we we really do need the funds, um, mm -hmm. and every dollar of donations that comes in, every penny of donations that comes into us, goes straight into the conference. Nobody, none of the People who, none of the organizers take a fee of any kind. We don't take um, any pay. And the, none of the money goes to any other cause um, or any other purpose. Um, I guess the only thing, I guess, okay, I lied a little bit, but that's because we have, you know, like website um, hosting costs and we have, um, you know, just like some office expenses like paying for QuickBooks and things like that. But, you know, they're still Skepticon related um, and essential to running the organization. Um, so yeah, every every penny counts, every dollar counts, every hundred dollar counts. <laughs> <laughs> there, um, there were two hundred dollar donations. So I, that know, I know, I know. And then uh, Alex is still floating, so oh, I'm really I, happy about this. I hope that I can get all the way to the end of this game in this time. <laughs> Make it a, an even hundred. We'll see nice. how my stamina lasts. <laughs> so you yep. go and take care of your your familial <laughs> relations and I will hold the floor here. Alright, well hopefully somebody will be able to jump on with you for the last little bit at least and uh, I'll check in when we get back from dinner and see how you're doing and if I can jump on for a few minutes I will. Sounds good. See you then. Alright, talk take to care. you later. Single cam. I'm not kidding about the hands though. Holy crap.
Fan noise won't be too bad for everybody, but I need some air moving in here. Onward.
I'm not supposed to die here. <laughs> like so. Barrel shot is the one that charges by making a big ball over your head. And I think it doesn't cost anything to hit bad guys with that ball. something. Hello. Yes, hello. I am all of those things that you have mentioned. <laughs> lonely and bored and also lonely again? And bored. <laughs> Mostly bored. lonely. Bored. Listen, lonely. how can you be bored playing Mega Man all day, honestly? <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> yes? It's less boring than it is painful at this point. Oh, it's no! super what? exciting, but holy crap, my hands are killing me. <laughs> Dude, have you been stretching out? Doing my best. But... Stretching your fingers, doing that knuckle cracking thing that people do to like prepare for things like punching and typing and punching. doing other yeah. stress. You're like a really big muscular guy that like he's probably bald and like totally jacked and has at least one tribal tattoo. He always like cracks his knuckles and looks at you like he's gonna like, really fuck you up if you test him, you know? I love that you really commit to these fictions. <laughs> well, I'm committing to the fiction because it's like it's a trope. It's in a lot of action films. It's out there. It's a thing. I believe you. <laughs> you should. 
<laughs> so I've beaten Mega Man 3. Oh my god, that's great! So I'm at Mega Man 4 now. Holy shit! Mega Man 4! The fourthiest Mega Man out there. It is. Of all of the Mega Mans, this is the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, it is! Well, that was a Mega Man game. <laughs> We're really good at this. I'm very proud. Good. I'm glad. I'm happy that you're happy. So happy. So the airport was fun. You missed out on that in my life. Wow. That's that's great. Yeah. Did, did, was there like anything exciting? Like, did you yell bomb or anything? <laughs> no. I just no. picked up people. Okay. And then we got food and now we're here. So, yeah. <laughs> Would you eat? Tacos. 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 Do you really say taco? No. Oh, oh no. I was <laughs> singing tacos to you, so I did it weird. Tacos. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. I understand. Oh, oh the man. The ballad of tacos. I'm feeling punchy. I'm not sure I should have gone on the Skype. <laughs> no, this well, is awesome. Let me hold my fancy hipster sparkling water to my face. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's uh. It, Disgusting meme water. I like it. It's delicious. I'm not a soda drinker, so this is like as close as I'm gonna get to the soda. I I, <laughs> I don't, don't drink, drink soda it. unless there's rum in it. <laughs> Let me okay. clarify. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. It's a you know something to make it more palatable. Exactly. It's it's I can tolerate the soda if there's booze in it, no doubt. We are not recommending overconsumption of alcohol. No, no. Overconsumption is... God, it's just a bad time. Moderation really is key. So uh, you've talked a little bit with Vaughn and Rebecca today. You had... Um, you learned anything? Uh, they're pretty cool. I like them both. You learned that they were cool and you liked them. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I mean, I learned lots of things about Skepticon, but uh, <laughs> I don't remember them now. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I mean, I'm not expecting you to remember. There's a lot. There's a whole heck of a lot. And yeah. I don't really realize until someone asks me all of these things, and I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, actually, Skepticon's kind of a big, big thing. Yeah, there's lots there's, of moving parts. There's so many parts. They're all moving all the time. Oh yeah. Such parts. Many parts. Wow. Oh, you might be punchier than me. <laughs> maybe. Oh. Maybe. Or I think most definitely. I don't think there's a maybe about it at this point. I'll own that. So you know, I've died 218 times in total. 218 times. Uh huh. Wow. I mean, are you trying to like get a new re record for deaths? Well, obviously. The record being least deaths through. All of the Mega Mans by Jason. Well, uh, what's Sunday. what's your? Oh, all right. Um, never mind. It's not important anymore what the current record is because I think it doesn't exist. No, no, exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a winner no matter what. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I'm definitely gonna beat Mega Man Four by the end of this day. I will. I will yeah. Do it. I will. You feeling good about it? I'm feeling pretty good. Awesome. Confident. I like that attitude. I like it. A lot of positivity. Do you know what you use against Dust Man? A ring. Oh. Does that make Wait. sense? I was gonna say a vacuum, but I guess Rain Man rain powers also works? No, ring. A ring. Ring! Like, I heard rain! If, if you if you like this robot master, you better put a ring on it. Oh. Do we like it? Do we want to put a ring on it? Well, I put a ring in its face, so I uh, guess so. <laughs> is that... Are you supposed to put rings in faces? I'm not aware of the protocol, so I'm going to trust you on this one. I, I'm pretty sure that's the accepted way to deal with a rampaging robot master named Dustman. Who actually doesn't have anything to do with dust and is more like a junk man? I don't know. But there's another guy named Junk Man later in the series. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a 
blank man. Like, there's definitely a theme here with the bad guys. Okay, so uh, there was hard man in the last game. <laughs> to go along with top man. Wait a minute, hard man? <laughs> hard man, oh yeah, hard man. <laughs> was he difficult? <laughs> no, he had a gigantic erection. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Was, was he, like, phallically shaped? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he was kind of like Iron Man, and you had to shoot magnet missiles at him, so I don't know. I don't know why they didn't call him the Iron Man, except maybe for the lawsuits by Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, those. In copyright infringement. <laughs> and Whatever or... that's about. <laughs> right. Uh... Copyright infringement. Hey, I had sushi, too. You missed that. I still got a little ah. bit of sushi. So much sushi. I could even eat some of it now. I wonder if it would go bad in this kind of heat. Because it is a little muggy in here. It's a muggy in your Mega Man cave? My Mega Man cave. Ha 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 ha, I see what you did there. <laughs> you didn't do it on purpose, that did joke. you? Um, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 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 Wait, was that convincing? Hold on. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. No, I would never make really terrible puns. That's very unlike me. <laughs> I don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me neither. Me neither. Okay, I have to go fight Skull Man. Skull Man. Oh, so many men with, you know, nouns and verbs. Words. Dave guy. <laughs> yeah, Dave guy. Lucky. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make all the Steven Universe references. I don't even care if you get them. I yeah, I need to catch up on my Steven Universe. Yeah, you really do. I really, I just I watched a bunch of them in a row whenever I was laid up for something, and um, yeah, I just haven't watched it since. <laughs> Whoopsies. It's great though. Mm-hmm. Like, while watching it, my father was like in and out of the room. And, like, this show is great. <laughs> <laughs> For a cartoon, though, it really is. It is great. And it's yeah. great from like a, a standpoint of um, queer representation on television. Subversive, really blatant queer representation on TV. Yeah. And heartwarming and sweet and kind uh, maybe has some problems with its representation of black folks and people of color but you know it's okay to like a thing that's problematic as long as you recognize it's problematic right and don't make excuses for it like everybody who loves South Park for its edgy humor god South Park I have like uh. <laughs> like South Park immediately brings to mind like the kind of person I would never date. Like if they like South Park, I'm just immediately like, oh, you like South Park? <laughs> judgy, judgy, judgy. Oh, <laughs> like, I see what the problem is now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the problem. Nailed it. What are you listening to? Actually nothing, which is embarrassing. I should be- I, I mean, I'm totally listening to music. Don't worry about it. Uh, something really <laughs> catchy. Ha! Something really catchy, do you believe me? Shit. <laughs> Not at all. Sometimes I just dance in my office chair, I don't know. Am I the only one who does- I can't be the only one who does this. A little bit. A little bit. <sighs> no, I do too. In fairness, I do. E. C. I'm gonna be listening to Girl in a Coma. Really? What? <laughs> Sorry. What? What'd you say? Oh, Girl in a Coma is the band I'm listening to. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure I've heard of them. Yeah, because I sent you a video of theirs. <laughs> like, maybe a week ago. You think I actually watched, like, the things that you were me to? Uh, yeah. You think that's a thing? You think that I happens? do. Uh-huh. Sometimes. 
No, I think every time. I think you trust me too much. I think the next link I send you, you should be more careful with to clicking. Because <laughs> you just never know when I'm going to send you. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. I like that song. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. Are you doing, like finger stretches? Like really? You should probably like do some tiger claws or I don't know. What is it that video gamers do these days? God, I don't know. <laughs> you know, professional gamers—they've got to have some sort of regime for like stretching their hands or something, right? Because it's got to be. I feel like at least part of it is just building up the calluses. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know. If you ever had calluses from video gaming? Oh yeah, on my thumbs all the time. Seriously, <laughs> it's not hard with the original Nintendo console. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had calluses from video games, and I'm uh, judging you slightly for um, yeah, for well, having them. I I'd ask you what you've gotten calluses for, but I'm not- I don't want to know. <laughs> Soccer, weightlifting, softball. Oh, so not anything, you know, cooler than Actually, <laughs> in grad school I lost feeling in my pointer finger for about six months from hot gluing too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's that can happen. That's pretty nerdy. That's pretty nerdy. Yeah, like just the top part of my finger, I lost feeling in it, and I, I mean, I had a, I had a deadline, I had some pieces I had to finish, and it, it involved hot gluing, so I just sat, and I I should have switched up fingers, I should have used like the middle finger, but <laughs> I didn't. Oh well. Oh well. We're living and learn. Living and learning. We're doing it here. Just gotta, just gotta do it. Just gotta get in there and do it. Yeah. Ah. Carpe diem. Oh. Like, uh, what's his face? Uh, Shield of buff. Yes. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> Inspiring stuff, that. Oh, yes. I'm inspired. Yeah. Jason, I was going to ask you, like, what you'd learned just about Sketchagon so I could fill in any gaps, but if you don't remember, then there's really no point. Um, if you had asked me maybe several hours ago, I, I might have a better handle on it. I mean, I, I could tell you all the things that I already know about Skepticon, that you are free, that you have speakers who basically get paid... Uh, nothing uh, all the way through so everybody's everybody's volunteering uh, all of your funds go directly to creating the con making it happen uh, tiny 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 overhead with like uh, QuickBooks according to Rebecca <laughs> like yep. you buy you buy one piece of software that's not <laughs> it's ridiculous uh, all you need right hosting uh, <laughs> The con is accessible uh, intentionally by design. That there are um, there's closed captioning uh, that will be available on phones this year. That's awesome, isn't it? Uh, oh, the future is now. That. Yeah, I'm going to be using that quite heavily. Um, I really enjoyed just watching the closed captioning while it was happening because those those people are amazing, just oh. spot on. They're could, so good. You could say things like Saskadelphia and Onomatopoeia. And I, I know that they would get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No doubt. White Coat Captioning is the company that we use, and they're so professional, so friendly, and, s like, the people fight over who gets to do um, our con because Aww. they want to do it so badly. <laughs> Yeah. Aww, that's awesome. Yeah, like the woman who owns the company was like, it's what weekend? Damn it, I have another gig that weekend. I want to do this. <laughs> I'm going to get my best person for you. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. You, you can get your second best. That's fine. <laughs> no, but the best person is always the best. Well, yeah. 
nothing but the best for our convention years. I yes. Just died. Yeah. 220 deaths. 220. This robot has bled for your con. More Thank exploded. You. Thank you, tiny robot, for your blood and your time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I beat Skullman using the dust compact. Skullman! I don't know, I was I threw big chunks of metal at him. I'm sure that probably hurt. Sorry, Skullman. I can't imagine it felt very good. No. In my defense, I needed his weapon, which is a bunch of skulls. <laughs> I'd like to know where these skulls came from. <laughs> uh, good question. Like, where do I get ammo? <laughs> Maybe he fabricated them as some sort of paper mache elaborate project in the middle of his cave. I'm assuming these are robot skulls, because, you know, robots would have skulls. Do robots have skulls, though? That doesn't seem accurate. Huh. I am running out of steam. Are you? Yeah. You don't have much longer to go. It's true. I wonder if I should caffeinate more. That's always the answer. Uh, yes. What kind of caffeine? You've been doing mostly soda and maybe co coffee this morning? Uh, the coffee, uh, Diet Coke, uh, iced tea, like pure leaf, and what is it? Real sure. brood, pure leaf. I don't know the actual brain. I was uh, looking it, instead of avoiding the bullets from the bad guys. That was probably a bad choice. What brand is this? Real brood tea, pure leaf. That's real the brand. asterisk. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's like that's like McDonald's uses 100% all beef brand meat product. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, you think I'm joking about that? No. Nope. I don't. You should be bopping along to this catchy tune. You can just pretend I am, even though I'm not. You're totally in sync with it, so that works. Not anymore. <laughs> 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 no, that's it. <laughs> Done. Joke ruined. Forget it. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, punchy. A little bit, a little bit. This guy is Dive Man. I was telling you before about them trying to figure out ways to like, incorporate the specific types of robots that they wanted to put in. Like, yeah. This is just a water guy. He's Dive Man. It's kind of submarine shaped. Such good use of the thesauruses over at the Mega Man headquarters. <laughs> right. <laughs> this this guy, is right, that's where they make the games? <laughs> the, the, the Mega Man Emporium. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can get Orange Julius there. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have anti any pretzels? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> ah. Cinnabon. <laughs> Perfect. Uh... Okay, I was just checking to see whether or not I should go down this hole. Yes, I should. I should always go down the hole. Obviously. Um, y yes? Right? <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> oh. So what do you usually do on... Sunday evenings not play Mega Man? Uh, believe it or not, I don't usually play Mega Man. What? Okay. Uh, Sunday evenings, usually if I if I have things on my to-do list, I'll try to tech, check off a, a thing or two, but Sunday's usually pretty chill. Um, 
Right on. Just you don't wait for me. Go to the, go to church. Get a donut because it's free at church. Right. Um, yeah. The potato salad. Potato salad at church is always kind of dry. Uh, mm. yeah. mm -hmm. Don't generally go to church. Uh, church is not a thing for me. Well, all right. What about you? Uh, do you sing some hymns? Do you do you partake in the, the hymnals? Oh yeah, you know I love a good hymn. Mm. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. love oh a good no. Hymn. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sundays. Oh. I mean, when I have them off, I just I really try to do um, nothing to give myself some time off, but. Smart. Gosh, all kinds of things. Sometimes we have Skepticon meetings, um, because Sunday nights are largely free for everyone who is involved. Um, and the meetings usually last about an hour. Chat about all the things we're working on. Cool. Yeah, we were supposed to have one tonight, but somebody wanted to play Mega Man all day, so I guess, you know, I'll just hang out with you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, I mean, you can if you want. Yeah, it's cool. I'm just going to be here playing Mega Man anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you would be playing Mega Man whether or not we were here. Got it. Right. <laughs> At some point or another, I'd like to get in the habit of streaming more regularly just to play old games like this for fun, not for a particular fundraiser. Like, fun, fun. That's what games are supposed to be, right? But I don't know. Yes. Um, my work has been really difficult lately. Um, yeah. Our workplace has sort of the schedule that is based on the school year, kind of, in that really? we have products that are mostly primarily consumed by students during the work year, mm. during the school year. And so yeah. the product cycle, the life cycle, kind of exists in tandem with the school year, and so once it's a, a school night, I say jokingly about it being a work the night before work. I really mean it's a school night for kids. Like, <laughs> and tomorrow is probably going to suck while I'm bailing water or you know trying to keep servers up because yeah, yeah. being hit by the students. So those pesky students. Yeah, if it weren't for them, I mean those servers would be fine. They'd be great. They'd be in good shape. Yeah. Dang them, you know, making it so that I can be gainful employed. Dang them. You need. You might want to work on your on your insults. I don't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Dang them to They're heck. They're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so much better. You've done it already. Would have gotten away <laughs> with two for a few meddlesome kids. Oh no. <laughs> And that talking <gasps> dog. What talking dog? What are you talking I'm about? Sorry? I said, and that talking dog. What, to what talking dog? What are you talking about? No? No, I'm not getting it. Are you just are you just cracking because it's late or no? <laughs> <laughs> A little. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, so Scooby-Doo has a talking dog in it. Oh, it does. Yes. I, I know you're a young'un at 30. You might not be aware of the whole... I mean, I know about Scooby-Doo. I just don't care about Scooby-Doo. Well, right. I mean, really, who does? <laughs> um, fans of Scooby-Doo. I suppose. Fuck them. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're right. Nice. I'm punchy. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Still feeling pretty good about my chances of beating Mega Man Four, though. I'm also feeling good about it. So I am at the last robot boss before I have to go to the Wily areas, which were a problem in the last few games. 
shouldn't be that bad this time around. Hopefully. We'll see. Maybe I'm being overly optimistic. I don't think so. I've got this. This is the one that I actually own as a kid. Um, awesome. Other ones I basically rented. I rented. I rented number Thanks. two, three or four times. From Blockbuster? <laughs> you know, I actually worked at Blockbuster for a while. Oh, wow. I worked at a movie gallery for a little bit. Really? Yep. I think I knew that. I think. Yeah, I think we've um, already bonded over this, uh, this bid this yeah, of our... I don't remember that very well, though. That was a long oh. time ago. Yeah, I remember telling you how awkward it was to rent porn to old, like, older gentlemen as a, like, a 17-year-old girl. Or, like, calling them about how big booty whatever was late. <laughs> yeah, that, that is probably kind of awkward and possibly illegal in some states. I don't know. I don't know. I remember that while I was working at Blockbuster, I was the youngest person in all of Canada to be working at a Blockbuster. All of Canada? All of Canada. I was the only one who was 16 when I got my job. Did you get it like a certificate or something to like mark the occasion? Maybe a small plaque? <laughs> Placard? No, but uh, apparently my application was a big thing that they had to talk to corporate headquarters about to see if it was allowed. <laughs> it was great. And apparently lawyers got involved or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. I didn't think I was really, you know, that... It's, it's it called child involved. labor laws. I think that's what they were mostly concerned about, right? Well, I would hope. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would hope, but I think it was more about the fact that there might have been softcore porn on the shelves, like... Yeah, no, I know. Hardcore or anything like that, which is... They were like the Walmart of, of video stores. Like, you couldn't get porn there. There wasn't anything even remotely porn-like. What, the blockbuster you worked on? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that was a thing with all blockbusters or just mine. I don't remember the blockbuster near me growing up having any, um, I guess, sexy titles. But then again, I'm short and I can't see up high and that's where they namely were, right? Right. All of the good stuff was up high where I couldn't reach it or see it. And right, I still so can't reach it or see it. Right, so and Lauren can't get. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, at some point I think people grow out of that whole, like, the people who are all taller than me are older than me thing, and I never have, because I've never been tall. So I just assume anyone who's taller than me is older than me, which is a mistake. Don't ever do that. <laughs> I just got a contact request from Bart, who I assume... Yes! Sure that, uh... Bart is our website magician. He's going to talk to you for a little while. That sounds great. Yeah, you can ask him all about what it's like to be a wizard. I could... I'm... I actually know Bart. I know that face. <laughs> of course you know him. <laughs> He's around. I, I know this guy. I've seen him once or twice somewhere. <laughs> uh, probably at Skepticon. He's been there like the past, what, three years? <laughs> so, do you want to jump off the call and I'll, I'll tag Bart in? Sure, sounds good. Uh, well, talk to you later. Are you going to uh, come back afterward? Uh, probably, yeah. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Talk to you See later. You bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hello! Hello! Hi there. <laughs> Bart, How's I I know who you yeah. are. I've seen you before. I was just saying to Lauren. Yeah, hey, we, we, met, uh, we met last year at the Skepticon organizer dinner. You were there. And... Yes. You were at the same yeah. table as me. It yes. A, a good time was had by all. Yes. As you know, I am playing the Mega Man games. I am 222 deaths into Mega Man. I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine would be much higher because I'm terrible at that game. I'm at uh, Mega Man 4, I'm at the last of the eight robot bosses before I have to go after the, the wily stages, so... Oh, this is gonna get, uh, this is gonna get hairy. 
I'm hoping to have this done before my 12 hour count. I think I can do it, but there's no way in hell I'm gonna get all the way through Mega Man 5. Will things go terribly wrong if I try to watch uh, the, the game stream while, uh, you're, while I'm Skyping? Uh, by all means, you're probably best off to turn it down. The volume. Um, because. There we go. It's ah, like yeah, I got it. 15 seconds behind most of the time. <laughs> and so, right, I got you. Um, so, I understand that you're their web guru, and Lauren wants me to call you a wizard, even though I know perfectly well that you. <laughs> I always you tell do. her there's no such thing as magic. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, which I think she's supposed to know that already. Uh, you know, skeptics are supposed <laughs> to know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she believes, but, uh, but so yeah. let's not disabuse her of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but no, yeah, I do. Uh, so, uh, you know, a few years ago, I think it was around uh, the Skepticon 3 or so, uh, they had a website that was just kind of what they could do that somebody threw together. And I was just like, um, hey, I was wondering if you needed help with your website or something. The way Lauren tells it is that I walked up to her and told her website sucked. And she said, good, then you're going to you're gonna redo it for me. That's how she tells it, but I don't think that's actually how it But, um, yeah, so I've been involved with uh, website things and tech, general tech things in general at Skepticon. Um, if you go to Skepticon, you may see me uh, running around doing microphone things or even being, I, I usually am in the sound booth, like, most of the time, doing the uh, the sound and whatever else. So we could probably to be done. based on the fact that I'm going to be trying to do the microphoning for you. I'm going to be the stage manager this year. That's that's good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Blythe usually does the uh, the microphone stuff, but there's been times when I have to go, you know, fix something or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, that that saves. There, there was there were there have been years when I've been in the booth and and at the front, and I have to keep running back and forth, and that's ridiculous. So no, that's no fun. I've had yeah. I've had to do some modicum of tech support at uh, the Secular Woman Work conference uh, a few years back Stephanie's van put on uh, and it's not it's not easy, it's not the easiest thing in the world hmm. so I totally get that um, solidarity brother <laughs> so how, how far are you into Mega Man? Uh, I am at number 4 uh, so I've beaten 1, 2 and 3 and I am, I would say, roughly ah, 50% of the way through Mega Man 4. Uh, I should be able to beat it in the next two hours. But my hands are really getting out. <laughs> I can sorry. imagine. It's just, ow. <laughs> are you playing on a real console or is this emulated? Uh, it is an emulator. I'm using a Logitech controller, which is kind of like an Xbox controller. Um, oh, okay. It doesn't have quite the form factor of the original Nintendo, but uh, it's the only way that I could get this in the stream. I'd love to have been playing this the whole time on a real on a Nintendo. Real one. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also then I wouldn't have the benefit of save states and stuff, so <laughs> I kind of cheated. But honestly, the controller you're using is probably more ergonomic than the old Nintendo <laughs> controllers. It's so. true. The flat square. <laughs> your hands are in square <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. shape. <laughs> it's a little corners digging into your hands. And so you, uh, this year you're going to be... Um, sorry, you said you're going to be running the tech uh, like yep. back end in the booth? Yep, so I'll be, I'll be in the booth doing all the back end stuff for the tech stuff. Um, I'll be running the live stream that we usually do. Um, that'll be cool. using uh, YouTube Live, uh, like we did last year, um, and uh, there will be the homepage of Skepticon.org will turn into the live stream um, whenever uh, whenever the, the conference is going. Uh, one other cool te piece of technology that we did was we uh, we have uh, closed captioners that do live closed captioning. They've got uh, a lot of love and, tonight. Everybody's been talking. Yeah, about <laughs> yeah. So the the closed captioners, you know, uh, basically do it live, and we put the captions up in the hall but we also put the captions up on the live stream uh, so if you're wanting to watch it that way and um, we're going to actually uh, publish a link out uh, this year that you'll be able to if you're sitting in the audience and you want to be able to read the captions and maybe you can't read them on the screen or something uh, you can get your smartphone or your tablet or whatever you got with you and go to a website and that website will have the captions printing out on it live 
Um, I love that idea, and I am definitely going to make use of it. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the uh, the captions will come out there live, so you can uh, you can you can follow along that way if you uh, if you can uh, make your font bigger or whatever you're doing. Wow. Read problems with this sort of thing. Um. But yeah, the, the captioners are really great. I, I can tell you, the, the captioning setup is kind of cool. Um, if just you know, if there's any tech people watching and they want to know how we're doing this, uh, it's, it's I can go into some of that. Sure. Um, so the uh, the way we do it is uh, I generally have two computers up there in the booth. One of them is doing the video capture. Uh, the facility we use has a uh, built-in video camera on the back of one of the poles, uh, posts oh, cool. posts in the room, and so it's got like a joystick. It's really cool. You can you can point it around and point at the different things in the stage and what's going on. But we get an HDMI feed out of that, we capture it, and then we send that to YouTube Live. But before we do that, uh, we green screen the captioning website onto that so that we can have the, the captions overlaid on it. And then the captioners are not at Skepticon. They're elsewhere. They're remote. Oh, really? Um, so so the way it works is we have another machine set up that is getting audio from the mixer board. And cool. that machine is Skype, has a Skype call going to the captioner. And those, so, those guys are keeping up with the Skype Right, call. and the only lag there is is the Skype lag. Skype has some lag. And there's nothing we can do about that besides having, I don't know, phone calls or something, which I still think would have some lag. But, um, but it's, so they do, uh, uh, they, they listen over the Skype audio that comes directly out of the board, so they get a good, clean feed of the audio. Uh, and then they type, uh, it comes out on the live website, and then we send it out over the stream and, and into the hall. So... So that's actually how that works, and uh, we don't have the same captioner the whole time. Whole time, you know, they take shifts. Uh, it's a captioning company, so uh, I'll chat with the different captioners in the booth, and they'll, uh, uh, you know, each one will start uh, at a different time. And we actually was, had some funny things last year where uh, Lauren or pe different people on stage were talking to the captioners, and the captioners were talking back. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that live as it was happening. <laughs> that was that was wonderful, and like one of them goes, "Ah, oh, blushes." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, you guys are our so people. So that was that was really cool. Uh, I'll send out a little props to the company we use. It's called White Coat Captioning, uh, and they uh, they've been they've been really excellent um, uh, working with us on on setting all that all that up. So I, I'm trying my damnedest to make sure that you get enough funds that you can do the captioning again this year. And yes. Next year and the year after that. It's uh, it you know we um. That, you know, let's talk about you know how much money do we spend on tech? Not very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, I volunteer my time. Uh, we have another tech guy uh, named Vaughn this year who's helping us, uh, and he is going to be uh, helping with some of the tech stuff too. Um, but uh, you know, the the website and all that stuff and everything that happens, the Facebook integration, Twitter, all that stuff is basically you know just volunteer to set it all up and do it. Uh, and then we had to pay a little bit for hosting to host our website. Uh, try to do that on the cheap, as cheap as we can, uh, and stay stay up because uh, we don't have a lot of money for that kind of stuff. Um, so, and all the tech, uh, like for instance, like all the the computers that run the stuff, they're all just my machines. I just bring them up, so yeah. because I just donate them to to be used for Skepticon. So, because we do not have the big kind of budget to buy a whole bunch of computer equipment, which is, you know, fancy stuff. But we uh, we try to do some stuff with whatever gets donated or you know whatever that kind of stuff because uh, you know this is a free conference uh, and it is put on by the people who donate. Um, it is, as far as I know, the only free conference. Um, as far as I know, too, uh, and it's also the largest. Uh, yep. Somehow you've managed to grow it so that you can maintain populations outstripping every other. The other skeptical con, and that's not something to to be shy about. That's well, I mean, right. you know, I, yeah, the, part of that is that it is free. A lot of people who can't go come to the other conferences um, because they cost too much. So, um, and the reason that I started going to Skepticon is because I'm in the middle of the country, uh, and uh, Skepticon is a four-hour drive for me. So. Um, it was a it was a cheap conference to go to. I didn't have to pay anything for it. It's a four hour drive, so it's gas money and hotel room. So that's uh, you know that's much cheaper than uh, than if I have to get a plane flight, you know, and hotel, and then I also had to pay the conference on top. So yeah, uh, for me, I'm driving from Minnesota 
but uh, that's certainly better than driving from Canada. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> but, so, uh, do you live in Minnesota? Yes, I do. Uh, in Minneapolis proper. But you're from Canada. Yes. I am actually still a Canadian citizen, despite living here in the States. I'm here on a NAFTA visa, which means that should Trump be elected and scrap NAFTA like he says, I might be forced out of the country. <laughs> that's awful. Oh, that's awful. Well, this is not going to happen, right? Uh, I hope not. Oh, I hope not. Oh. I hope your country is actually over its fascination with strong men, and yet the rise of 4chan and white supremacists kind of makes me wonder. Yeah, they're loud, but I mean... I don't know. On election day, if we can just get people out to vote, I think. I think, I think if people get out and vote, I don't think that he'll win, necessarily. But I hope you're right. I really do. If um, only the loudest voices show up at the polling place, then, uh, I don't know. That scares me. So. Yeah, indeed. Not that Skepticon necessarily has a uh, political... Not anything I'm saying is necessarily the views of Skepticon, but still. <laughs> um, we, we, we lean liberal. fairly li skew liberal, yes, but um, that's not, uh, you know, it's uh, no kind of official positions or anything. So. No, definitely not. Uh, all of that said, just because you and I skew liberal doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't uh, a place. Or right. Anybody else? Agreed. Whew. So, how long is your drive if you go to Skeptica? Uh, almost ten hours, all told. It's wow. About as long as I've been playing Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier than the Mega Man. <laughs> well, certainly easier on my thumbs, anyway. <laughs> so why Mega Man? Um, masochism, I guess. Uh, I always enjoyed the games. <laughs> oh, I missed a jump. <laughs> Not Mario? No. No. Mario would be um, significantly easier. I just. Right. Um, I just use a save state to get myself out of falling two screens. Ah. I was going to ask you, like, does... I can't remember, Mega Man doesn't let you die in, uh, infinitely, does it? Uh, actually, believe it or not, there uh, are unlimited continues. Oh, okay. Alright. However, I am cheating that by putting in Game Genie codes that give me unlimited lives anyway. Ah, okay. So, it's, um, uh, I'm kind of, uh, bending the rules a little here, but at the same time, not by much. Um, yeah. the unlimited continues just means that I don't have to mess with the password screen, which would be really boring to feed users. Um, really the, the honest, honest to goodness cheating that I'm doing is mostly to save people watching me fail at the same miserable part over and over again. Um, that's me on every game ever. <laughs> I'm still going through, like, I have to make all of these jumps in order to get to the next area. Um, I'm not save scumming based on, like, oh, I got hit, I'm going to restore. Uh, it's more like, oh, I died. Uh, I'll restore so that I don't have to go backtrack through the entire level and grind a bunch of weapons. Stuff like that. Right. Um, but it's still rough. <laughs> They were pretty rough. So how long have you been uh, going to Skepticon? Uh, this will be my fourth year. And it will be the first year that I'm actually volunteering for anything. So it'll be fun. Cool. Well, we definitely appreciate it. I'm happy to help. Whatever way I can. I went to Skepticon 2. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, Skepticon 2 was, you know, the one that was... It was just held on 
this is just to show you how far we've come. It was held on the University of Missouri campus. Okay. Um, we went there. There were no signs to tell us where to go. Uh, there was a piece of paper that we finally tracked down once we went to like several of the buildings and were asking people like which way do we go <laughs> and we finally made it to the thing and they had like a one sheet piece of paper that said uh, the times and who was speaking and it said the buildings but it did not tell you where these buildings were <laughs> and the whole thing was not in the same building so like you know like part of it was in this one theater and then another one was in this other building and like uh, it was definitely like oh some students are running in this and they have no idea what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> but it was it was pretty fun and pretty interesting and uh, you know it was the it was the first kind of atheist skeptic conference I had ever been to so um, so I thought it was awesome so um, and it's grown quite a bit from its inception of being uh, a bunch of people making fun of theists on campus. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I am not doing so well. Uh, that guy looks mean. That's the first boss of the Cossack levels. And uh, to all of my, my Russian viewers, uh, I'm thinking uh, Miri, who... Mary Mogilevsky, who has problems with traditional Russian representation in media. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry about this, Dr. Cossack. <laughs> this is... Clearly, it's just a Russian stereotype. Mm. And also, he's evil because he's Russian. Because, you know, that's a thing. Ah, right. Well, you know, this was during the height of the Cold War when this game was made, right? Although, right. um... <laughs> but wait, this this game was probably made in Japan, though, right? Yes, it was or made somewhere. in Japan, and it was made in 1991, so it was actually oh, after okay. Well, yeah, but the, okay, yeah. I mean, the castle has this uh, tradition, traditional uh, Russian minaret type thing. It's mm. it's pretty awful. It's pretty stereotypical. <laughs> oh yeah, but that wasn't that that wasn't. Let's see, what year did you say? 91. Believe yeah, so the, like height of Tetris, right? So that maybe they're just trying to cash in on that sort of thing. Oh, maybe. And I'm sorry that I keep dropping the conversation, basically. I'm just sort of concentrating. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to think I have a good reason, but... Um, so who are you looking forward to most seeing uh, talk this year? Uh, Carrie, Pop Carrie Poppy. Yeah, um, yeah I, I listened to their podcast, uh, Ono, oh Ross, and Carrie, um, and it's pretty... Uh, I, just, I like the their style and the, and the stuff that they're doing. Uh, the kind of... It's like it's one of the, probably the most mainstream uh, skeptical podcasts. Like, I think their audience is not just... You know, you're the traditional skeptical movement people that listen to their stuff. I think you know they, they try to appeal to uh, to a broader audience than that or whatever. And uh, I think it's uh, really cool the stuff that they've done. And also, super brave. I don't know if you've listened to some of the episodes. Um, the one episode where they go to um, oh, Tony Alamo's ministries. Oh goodness, yes. That's practically scary like i'm just like afraid for them the entire time that they're describing all that what happens i mean i know they're okay because you know they're doing a podcast about it but still i would just like be like oh my god i just that would just just scared the crap out of me like i i can't even imagine being like volunteer you know voluntarily going to a place like that that's that you know um like a cult or whatever um just no, I, I completely get that. Um, the Scientology episode. Uh, yeah. Basically, anyone where they're going in and investigating life. Right. And it's all really. I, I fear for them when they do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. 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 So, you're well, the Mormon like, one. Oh, the, the, the Mormon one, though, wasn't very scary, uh, honestly. It was actually, you know, they, they actually made some friends, <laughs> you know, <laughs> out of going to the, see the Mormons. So, uh, you know, chalk one up for the Mormons not being as scary as Santa Lopez or Tony Lama. 
So. <laughs> Honestly, that's not hard though. I mean, no, no, I guess clear. it's not. I guess it's not. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, who, who else are you? Uh, who are you excited about seeing? Um, well, I always love seeing Greta Christina. Um, I love talking to her in person. She's an absolutely phenomenal human being. Uh, I am close with basically everybody who's from the orbit, um, who's presently blogging at the orbit, I should say. Uh, and I am looking forward to seeing a lot of the newer folks. Uh, Bria, Bria Crutch, Crutchville, uh, I'd love, love to hear her. Um, it's been a while since the, um, the debacle. Uh, right. Most recently, that she was involved in, and I'd like to hear her her take on uh, things like the, um, the concerned citizen movement, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, and not from the standpoint of you know she's a black woman, so she she should talk about this, but because we as a skeptical community are not doing a good enough job being present and, and supporting uh, these movements where people are empirically uh, losing their lives over nothing. Uh, and it's shit. It's absolute shit. If we want to be social justice oriented, we should be paying more attention to that kind of thing. Uh, I, I, I Some people Yeah, do. no, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that we have uh, several speakers in color this year who are going to be talking about this, some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I think that you know, the skeptical atheist community has leaned you know, white <laughs> for yeah. way too long, and I think uh, there's voices out there that it's, uh, I'm glad that we're inviting some to speak because um, that's important stuff. In fact, uh, you know, it's, it's just yeah, I don't I don't know. It's just you know, it seems like every day there's there's a story about some black person getting shot by some cops um and i i don't think that this is uh i don't think that this is new um i, I tweet uh reposted a picture earlier that was some quote by will smith about uh you know like there aren't more of this stuff happening we're just filming it um and as a technology person who's kind of seen you know the smartphone like take over our lives i think the smartphone is the reason why we're getting to see this stuff um people there's cameras everywhere right yeah. and so that's a good thing because that's exposing a lot of this stuff that i think's been going on for a really long time um and now my hope is that because we are all seeing this that the conversations are starting and that something will be done about it um but you know you think how how many more have to happen before something ha we do something like this, you know? Yeah, this is not something, it's not like it's, you don't have to wait for the scientific evidence to be in to no. say that a person being shot who does not actually have a weapon maybe shouldn't have been shot. Like, that's right. not, every single case, uh, people who are being choked uh, over selling loose cigarettes, uh, every one of these cases is damning from a humanitarian perspective uh, right. that they can be allowed to happen. Uh, I mean, it used to be that, like, I don't know. I, I remember seeing, this is about 15, 10, 15 years ago, I remember seeing shows on television about how, I guess because I was always interested in technology and stuff, I noticed these things, but there were shows about how uh, all these pe invent people were inventing like non-lethal ways to deal with criminals. Mm -hmm. um, so, like one of the ones that I remember was this like foam stuff that you you spray at someone and it basically immobilizes them, uh, but doesn't hurt them. They just like can't move, um, or you know, just other technologies like that that I've seen. But it's like uh, no, instead what we've done is we've given cops uh, army type military type weaponry and supplies which is like it's going the exact opposite from trying to figure out how to uh you know uh subdue people without hurting them i mean three quarters of the time that they uh, pull their taser they're actually pulling their gun instead 
Like, oops, right, I, right. I meant and to shoot him. They have tasers, tasers, but they're but they're pulling guns uh, guns out. It's like, well, why do you even have the taser? Then? <sighs> oh, the tasers question. for the white people. I see. Pretty much, uh, and open carries for white people. Right, like, right. Oh, I'm gonna have to take that hit. Oof. It's a self-scrolling level. I hate these. I'm waiting for now what hit you're going to have to take because I'm behind, so I need to... <laughs> I, had to, I had to basically tank a hit through a cannon because there was no other path for me to go forward. Oh, yeah. And it's a self-scrolling yes. area. I just can't. Yeah. Oh, this is this is painful. This is sore. That's okay. I have no skills for any of this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm actually... Being a computer guy is one thing, but like I'm not really a gamer. No. Mainly because I was my coordination, hand-eye coordination was never, I never felt it was very good. Uh, do you play any casual games though? I, mean, I play casual games, and my favorite kind of games are puzzle games. Um, so games where dexterity isn't what drives the game forward, but like solving puzzles. Okay. Uh, so you know, like <laughs> as my experience playing Portal, I loved Portal. Okay. Because it's all the, because yes. it's all these, it's all these puzzle solving things, right? Yep. But the problem is, is that I got stuck on a dexterity based level of portal, and it ruined it for me. Because wow. I, after you try, try it about 15, 20 times, I just get frustrated and I don't want to play it anymore. Um, but like all the levels where you're just trying to figure out the right order to do things, or where the dexterity part is not critical, those are great, right? So. Yeah, definitely. Um, I liked uh, back in the. I'm still showing my age, but Mist was one of my favorite games I ever played. Uh, <laughs> that, and all the series. Don't worry about that. Mist was one of my first computer games too. Uh, <laughs> if you accept all of the Sierra games, don't worry about showing your age here. I'm oh no, no! I was going to say puzzle games like uh, Heroes Quest and King's Quest and. Ha, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So no. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was playing. Uh, you know DOS games back in the day, but honestly, what happened was I got uh, I, I grew up and I got a real job, and then I got other volunteer jobs like Skepticon <laughs> and other jobs. I don't have time to play games now, so Skepticon um, is a real job. It's good. It's a yeah. good thing. Job that. Sorry, you kind of froze up there. What was oh, sorry. That? It's a job that none of us get paid for. Yeah, exactly. It's a real job. You're getting real experience. No money. <laughs> Pays <got> real low. <laughs> yeah. uh, concentrating on these little platform things. I gotta jump, jump, and jump. And I'm saving a lot because I really don't want to have to do this again. Ah. Uh, Am I gonna make it? Am I gonna make it? Uh, I, mean... ha, I made it. Excellent. Have, have you no done this before? Have you played Mega Man this long before? Not, Just... not this long. Not this <laughs> long by a, a long shot. Um, I mean, I probably played through all of them. Eventually, um, many of them on an original Nintendo hardware, um, so I didn't have the benefit of save states. I wasn't marathoning them, I was using passwords and stuff. Um, uh. <laughs> I really want that energy tank, so I'm going to keep trying different ways to get it. So, uh, I don't play very many video games, but uh, one of my other hobbies is in that cabinet that you see behind me, and that is board games. Board games. And board uh, games I thought I'd... So, I... Lots of different kinds of board games. <laughs> you name it, uh, I've played it. Um, but, but, yeah, the... Uh, so, um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that, uh, uh, you know, one night, uh, one night at Skepticon, we have the prom. It's on Saturday night. Uh, but Friday night, we have a board gaming night. Uh, and we'll have one of the halls there, and we'll have tables, and one of the local board gaming companies is uh, supposed to come and uh, bring games. Uh, uh, I hear probably the bring... board gaming company shut down, though. 
Uh, then I, I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, maybe there's, uh, But I know that it's on the schedule for our board games to happen, so I'm hoping that uh, if nothing else, I'll bring some games. <laughs> so, <laughs> But good. yeah, uh, and other people can bring games. Um, but yeah, that's uh, we did that last year, and it was uh, it was pretty successful. And uh, I taught some people. We, we we taught I taught some friends of mine Pandemic, and they never played Pandemic before. Oh, um, I haven't played it yet either. Well, then you need to come play Pandemic. It's oh. like my favorite board game, pretty much of all time. I'm definitely yeah. going to be there for the board game nights. Uh, I'm definitely going to be. I, I understand that there's going to be two nights this this time around. Uh, for board gaming? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to have board gaming set up during the prom in case people will want to go do that instead of dance or whatever. Is what I think I think the plan was. So, I think that's a good plan ultimately. Yeah. But yeah, um, I just uh, finished uh, with some friends of mine playing through Pandemic Legacy, which is the expansion. The new no, well, so Pandemic board? Legacy is a legacy board game. There have been I don't know three or four of these games. The first one that the guy wrote was Risk Legacy, uh, which was the Risk board game, uh, but in a legacy format. So what that means is um, when you play, like for instance, Pandemic Legacy, uh, it's like a regular game of Pandemic, uh, except. Um, it's marked off into 12 months of the year, so it's like a story. Right. Uh, and so, like, you're, as the game progresses, you do things like you stick stickers on the board, or you go through this deck of cards and different things happen, or it might say, tear up this card and replace it with a different card, and you actually physically tear the card up in a different one. Because right you're not on board. to ever play it again in any future... No, no, it's, it is a story that you start and you play the the 12 games or whatever and it finishes and the and the game changes as you play through it um uh, and it's really cool and uh you it's got 12 months which is 12 games but if you lose a game you have to play that month again so if you really stink at pandemic legacy you can play 24 games <laughs> if you're really awesome at it, you can play 12 games but usually most people play somewhere in between you know that um and a lot of people say well yeah if you're in paid like 40, 50 bucks for this game and then only get to play it once. And then I said, you're not really playing it once. You're playing it, you know, 18, maybe 19 times. Um, and but most people, when they buy, board, <laughs> well, most people buy a board game and like play it three times and it just sits on their shelf. So yeah. <laughs> if you manage to make it all the way through this, you're actually, you are getting your money worth for it. But it's a, it's a super, super fun game. And just the, the fact that you, if there's sort of the suspense, like, um, it comes with a bunch of uh, boxes that are closed and a bunch of little uh, envelopes and stuff, and you don't get to open them until certain points in the game, and you get to open them up and reveal new things. And um, it, it, it's, there's a suspense of like what's going to happen next, kind of a thing. Okay, so it's really fun. That sounds epic, actually. Um, I yeah, love it's, the it's idea. pretty epic. Even just the idea without ever having actually played it myself is mm -hmm. wild. Oh, I'm concentrating on the having of the boss. Whew. Okay, I beat him. <laughs> uh, I just got a copy of Slash, which I played last year. Um, which I absolutely adore. It's sort of like um, uh, it's like Cards Against Humanity uh, without any of the nastiness about it. Uh, you oh, okay. Basically, pick a bunch of um, characters from the deck, and what you're doing is creating a fan fiction pairing between these characters, and you have to, okay. you have to try to guess who the dealer would consider the best pairing out of all of these characters um, right there's another game that that reminds me of called super fight have you heard of that one yes yes where you imagine a bunch of fictional <laughs> characters beating each other up instead <laughs> yes <laughs> so yeah a non-violent version of it but, uh, <laughs> yeah that, that but anyway, that's too. <laughs> that's the one i've heard of but yeah you know it's that it's that age-old question well who would win in a fight superman or batman and it's for anybody any character fictional fictional characters you can think of so yeah, superman versus goku <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that question that comes up all the time amongst nerds. Batman versus the zombies from The Walking Dead, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think Batman is going to win no matter what, but... <laughs> ah, okay. 
I think Batman is like a trump card. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> he's got Batman. plot on his side every time. <laughs> so, let's see. I am going up against Dr. Cossack, um. who is actually not evil, it turns out. I'm spoiling <laughs> you. <laughs> he is actually see? not evil. It turns out he's just... Trying to rescue misunderstood. His, his daughter is kidnapped by the evil Dr. Wiley, of course. Oh, Dr. Wiley. Plot devices. Our bad guys have, have complicated stories. <laughs> yeah, the story actually starts to pick up here at Mega Man 4. They decided that they maybe <laughs> needed a plot. <laughs> it's Mega Man. I mean, it doesn't really have a deep plot now. No, it's shooty shooty. Pew pew, yeah. thin excuse for robots to kill each other. Yeah. I'm disappointed at how many video games basically are just shoot things. Yeah. The Call of Shooty games come to mind particularly. Um, yep. They might have a plot. Games. Thin veneer in, in amongst them. One of my favorite one of my favorite video games has no shooting at all on it. What is that one? There's a game called Journey for the PlayStation 3. Oh, you know what? I have not gotten a chance to play that yet. Do you I have really a PlayStation 3? I do. You need to do that right away. I shall do so. Do it when you can sit down and play it uninterrupted. Okay. And just, and just it's not going to take a couple hours to go through it. It's, it's not a long game. game thing. Um, but anyway, but it is not definitely not a shooty-shooty game. Um, it, is a, it is a game It's very very artistic. A very artsy game. Okay. So if you like, if you like artsy games, so I do. As a general rule, yes, like artsy games. Um, I prefer a thinker game to <laughs> a fighter. This is, I, can. I mean, this game's not hard by any sense of the imagination. Um, uh, you know, the, there's nothing hard about it, um, but it is. I don't want to give too much away, but it's. Uh, uh, it might make you think. But mm, not in that sort of way. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's sold. I'm trying purposely because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to give it away. So, okay. um, <laughs> give me that way about it because it's, it's something you should sit down and experience, knowing almost nothing about it. So, um, a game that I've been mentioning a few times tonight that was the same sort of thing for me was Undertale. It's a game that you wouldn't expect to be a particularly deep uh, game. It kind of looks like an old Earthbound style game. It's an RPG. It's a very simplistic mechanics. And then it blows you away with its hidden depth once you realize that there's hidden depth there. Oh, that's on Steam. Mm. Yes, it is. Uh, $10, and it is worth every penny. I promise you, you will get your $10 worth. Okay, well, I have two games already on Steam that I've downloaded recently that I've got to play through and uh, and uh, before I get to this, but I will put this on my wish list. Um, yeah, I've got... Uh, there's a game called Inside uh, that's on Steam that I've been hearing people talk about. It's supposed to be really good. Uh, and the ga a game that I've been kind of wanting, and then it went on sale when I bought it, which was called Lifeless Planet, which is about a... I don't know, it's about a, a, a guy in a space suit on Mars, but he comes across like human stuff left on Mars. It's really, I don't really understand what it's about, but it seems kind of interesting. And it's, I've heard good things about it. It's, the, it's right up my alley, I think. That's the kind of thing I'd uh, like yeah, to the last, play. Yeah, the last game that I played that I liked uh, that was of this. I'm like indie type games and stuff. Did you Have you played Firewatch yet? I have not yet. That is also on my wish, wish list. Uh, I do yeah, tend cool. toward the indie games more often than not. And Firewatch, I understand, is the game about uh, there's uh, kind of a quiet uh, backwoods. You have a walkie-talkie. You're talking to a friend, something like that. Yeah, you're a you're a, a guy who's in a uh, forest tower in a national park. Okay. Um, and. Uh, it's got a backstory to it, and anyway, this and your character it goes through a backstory, and then you show up, and your basically your job is to take care of this national park and watch for fires, right? Right. Um, and uh, you have a walkie-talkie, and your only communication with any other person is the person on the other side of the walkie-talkie. 
which is at another tower. Um, it's so, far away. Anyway, it's yeah. So, uh, so it's pretty. It's pretty neat. Where is the add to wish list button on Steam? Why can I not find it? Oh, do I have to be logged in to see that? Maybe that's what it is. Possibly, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure. I was, like, well, I, went in, I was like, I know there used to be one. I think you have to be logged in for sure. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to be logged in. Can't see the button. Huh. <laughs> Dr. Wiley says, I'm gonna break you, Mega Man. <laughs> it's hilarious because, you know, the Ivan Drago is right behind him. Aw, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that, that Russian, the little black felt hat, that's not, uh, no, that's not the, stereotypical at all. No. <laughs> the, the babushka? <laughs> yeah. You know, people just wear those, you know. <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh dear. So I just uh, beat Dr. Cossack and now I have to go through Dr. Wiley's castle. But I am going to make it. What uh, what nationality is he making fun of? Dr. Wiley? Oh, I'm sure he's probably a German stereotype. Because he's, mm. he's got the big wild Al Albert Einstein hair. Oh, there you go, yeah. see <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen him played by an actual person anywhere uh, canonically so I don't know <laughs> I guess uh, he's playing the entitled white guy who thinks that he should own rule the world you know? that's that's who he's making fun of sure let's say that It sounds like he's a mad scientist. Is it what he is? He's, he's a bit angry scientist. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he's not mad, he's just perturbed. <laughs> I wonder what caused that whole thing, mad scientist. I kind of want to say that the old um, monster flicks, where they always yeah, no, but somebody... Well, how how did they how did what made those have that? Yeah, like where did that come as a trope? Um, yeah, I don't know. Just started straight up fear of science. I guess I don't know. I I guess so. It looks like I'm in a place where I can use the rush marine, and I'm probably going to need it. Yeah, there was a fear of science, and then sort of in the '50s in the United States, uh, science was like going to save us all. It was kind of a and then like the through the sixties, yeah. There's the add to your wish list. Yay! Okay, that is that. So Undertale is definitely one of those games that you should uh, check out as hidden depth. Um, Braid is the same kind of thing. Uh, Would you say? Braid. Is the same oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. Braid. It seems like a simplistic little puzzle game, and then you learn that there's deeper meaning to it all, and you kind of freak a little bit. Yeah. It catches in your I, throat when you realize what's going on. <laughs> and I, I had really high hopes for No Man's Sky. Um, it sounded like something that I would really like, and then I read all these reviews that said it was awful. Um, and so I and it was sixty dollars, and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get it if it goes on sale. I think it's worth it personally, um, in that my expectations were always that it would effectively be a landscape simulator. Right. Yeah. So I I think I had my expectations in the right place for it, where a lot of people might not. Yeah. Okay. Am I going to make it through this castle? Or am I going to fail miserably? Oh, the other reason I'm not getting No Man's Sky is because I don't have a good enough PC for it. So. <laughs> uh, I will say that it's um, it's a little, I don't have under, a PS4. <laughs> so. a little underwhelming for how for what its specs are. Like mm -hmm. I would have expected it to be 
prettier than it is, even though it's actually mm. quite quite attractive of the game. The aesthetics in it are, are gorgeous. Um, I would have expected it to have better frame rates, uh, yeah. better uh, texture, depth, stuff like that um, than it did. I'm not super disappointed. Um, I feel like it's the start, the base of a really good game. But I've found that the missions going to one place, uh, one type of, of, I guess, structure on a planet after another, they start to get a little samey. Um, mm. It's like every single planet in the universe has managed to be colonized by one of three races, and mm -hmm. they build the same building types over and over again, and they only ever put one guy in it. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> right. I mean, you could have a population of billions across the entire universe with all of the single persons in single houses. None of them are congregating <laughs> anywhere, really. Space Station has one dude on it. It's kind of it's very lonely, empty for something so vast. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Though, honestly, the universe should be fairly empty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, if they made the game realistic, it would be like, uh, okay, you're flying, you're flying, you're flying, you're flying, you're flying, you're flying. You landed on the planet. Oh, there's no, there's no life here. Uh, <laughs> 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 flying, 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 flying. Oh, no life. Yeah, Full solar much. system, no life. Have fun. Bunch of gas giants. Have fun. <laughs> um, are, there, are all the planets basically, like, Earth-like? I mean... Uh, there are no gas giants or like just you know rocky planets or any of that stuff are there um the vast majority are not jungle planets like they don't have very heavy vegetation um you'll find right. a lot of planets that have fungal life um some things that i've noticed are like i i found an actual dead world but there were still inhabitants there were little structures um, mm. Even though the only thing that I could find on it was plutonium, um, mm. and that's it. And basically, plutonium has to exist ev er everywhere; otherwise, you'd end up stuck on a planet. So wait a minute. So there's plutonium just laying around? Yeah, and these big, pink-looking shard crystal things, and you shoot them with your laser to collect them. So that's. I don't think uh, plutonium just. I don't think plutonium ever just lays around anywhere in the universe. No, no, not generally. Not usually. No. Maybe there was a long ago nuclear war on that planet. Maybe. I mean, it's as good an explanation as any. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds it sounds to me like from what I've heard about it, it's like each planet is like a climate. So it's like it's like the Star Wars idea of how planets work. You know, this yeah. planet is ice. This planet is desert. Like each planet is like a instead of like the real real you know the realistic thing, which would be planets have lots of different uh, climates and and uh, <laughs> you know everything. So the best that I've managed is a planet that has um, some mountain regions that are pretty high up and water at the same time. Uh, with cave structures, that's the most interesting planet that I've seen. Um, and it was vegetative, so it had uh, a good deal of ground cover, like grass. Uh, so it made for some good screenshots, um, but even it got tiresome because there was no frozen areas, there was no you know, deserts, things like that. Um, it was a place the, the planets are really tiny, you, you, can, you can walk. Can you walk all the way around the whole planet, or is it too big for that? Oh no, it's way too big for that. Um, but oh, okay. it's also way too samey. So if you tried, uh, like maybe you could do it in a, a number of days, but <laughs> right. I don't see what but you you'll can ever fly call. your ship around it, right? Around the right. entire planet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You can actually you can fly your ship all the way around a planet. Um, you're not going to find a lot that's particularly different. Um, I should be marking my deaths. Uh, okay, uh, next up is the bomb ball machine. I have to use the ring weapon a lot in this, this one. Hmm. 
So I would recommend No Man's Sky if you were really keen on having a really pretty screensaver-ish type thing. Um, that's kind of a relaxing game. But if you're yeah. looking for real, true-to-life space exploration, if you're looking for Star Trek, right. Farscape, you're not going to get it. Um, and to the extent that Which you do... It's really hard to do, probably. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. Oh, that was not fair. <laughs> I just got bounced off of my rush jet because I was using it a little too close to a bad guy. Oh. Sorry, I keep uh, I keep paying attention to my game. I really want to finish this one. It's okay. Oh, yeah, see, I just got to the part where you got bounced off. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> you see how unfair that was? That was clearly not my fault. Ah. So, I was telling somebody this story the other day. Um, the, the When things like that happen in games, or especially when things like that happen and I'm in a level in a game and it keeps happening, and it keeps happening, and it keeps happening, I have flashbacks and I don't enjoy the game. And the flashbacks that I have flashbacks to are playing E.T. On the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Are you familiar with this? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> I actually talked to Vaughn about this too. Was that uh, <laughs> there was a bug fix of it that makes it a significantly so, better game? <laughs> so you don't fall down in the pits constantly and Correct. get out of the pit and fall back in the pit. <laughs> exactly that. So what, somebody had a somebody took it and patched the ROM or something to make that better. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, it turns out that that was a bug that the hit detection is on the entire ET sprite, even the top, so that it's not like you're stepping on the mm -hmm. pit. It's any part of your body has touched the pit area gotcha. that you're falling in. And in some pits, the place that you're, you're respawned when you get out of it would touch the pit again. Right. So they made it so that the hit detection only happens on the feet, the last bottom row of E.T., and it's a, a lot better of a game just by doing that. Um, they made a bunch of other I'm, little changes, too, but that was the big one. My, uh, my memory is bad, but I was trying to remember if I had ever beat that game, and I think I did um, when I was a kid, and um, I think that when you beat the game, I could be wrong, if I'm wrong about this, then I probably didn't beat it. But that you assemble all the parts of E.T.'s telephone. Uh, and then you have to go put it somewhere. Uh, and then E.T.'s spacecraft comes down, and you get in the spacecraft and leave. Yes. Is that is that the ending of the game? Uh, it's not actually the ending ending, but it is, like, the end of what you can play. What happens uh. then is you start over... Um, you get different points. There oh. are uh, there's actually Easter eggs in the game, which I was surprised. Oh, by. really? Um, but there's this one particular Easter egg where um, there's a number of items that you might recognize. Uh, stuff like Indiana Jones's whip. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I I think I know what you're talking about. The uh, the sword from Adventure. Yep, uh, the uh, ship from Galaga. Yep. Uh, stuff like that. And yeah, I think I've heard of that before. I don't know that I ever happened upon any of those by accident you know, playing it when I was a kid. But the, the Easter eggs that I remember from when I was a kid was uh, on the Atari were, of course, the uh, famous one in Adventure. Uh, the one and where then, you get the guy's name? Yeah. Just a really ridiculous way of getting it too. Yeah, and um, then in Yar's Revenge, uh, if you blow up the um, the little uh, spinny thing as it flies towards you while it's in the rainbow area of Yar's Revenge, uh, a black line will appear in that rainbow area. And if you take your antennae of your little Yar fighter and you put them directly over the black line, it comes up and it shows you the author's initials backwards and then forwards. Huh. <laughs> and they had to do that because the game 
creators were not allowed to advertise themselves in the games. Correct. Like and they were usually solo endeavors. <laughs> yep. Yep. And they really didn't get their names credits put on the on the game, on the box or on the game loading screens or any of that. Well, of course, Yards Revenge did not have a game loading screen. It didn't have it had it just started. <laughs> there, were no, there was no screen before it started. Most yeah, of the 2600 games were like that. You, the startup screens on the on the Atari games were just colors <laughs> until it's not actually playing the game. Um, it was funny. I've owned uh, still about not being a gamer. I've owned two game systems in my entire life. So the Atari and what was the other one? The PlayStation Three I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sad. Uh, we have a PlayStation 4. Uh, I don't usually use it. I usually use my computer. My computer is my multiplayer, multi-purpose gaming rig. Uh, yeah. Most of the games I played when I was growing up were computer stuff, computer games, because I always had one of those, but I didn't necessarily have a, a console. <laughs> I've got an hour left to finish this game. And I've got to grind out uh, a bit of weapon energy for ring because I know that I have to use it in this one. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make this game? I don't know. Maybe. But, you know, it's all for a good cause. Um, I've enjoyed doing this and I'm very gratified that it has actually resulted in some donations. Uh, I think we were at That's $300 now? Or $225 with the exception of the person who pledged 25 per game I finish. Um, so that's 300 and could be 325 if I manage to beat this guy. So what are you doing? You're bleeding off I'm, uh, energy or something? Yeah, there's, uh, there's weapon energy for each of these weapons, the special weapons. Uh, and to refill them, you have to get these little blue energy right. crystal pellet things from from <clears throat> monsters or from the environment. Um, sometimes there are infinitely respawning enemy areas that are clearly intended for your ability to, to grind out to get... Oh, I see. So you're killing that skull thing that comes down every time and getting something different. Yep. Every time. Okay, I get you. Oftentimes I'm getting nothing. That's something I need. That blue one which you'll see in a few seconds. And I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to need dust as well, so I should probably grind out some dust to some, I should say, I should grind out some energy to apply to the dust weapon. And dust is a really poorly named weapon. It's actually a big hunk of metal. I, I don't know why. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Some sort of translation problem between Japanese and English or something? <laughs> I think so. I think it was like dustmen, like in Infamous. <laughs> They're just, you know, mechanical, weird hobos, I guess? I don't know. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't like doing these parts in live stream. Um, while I'd have the patience to do them myself, unless mm -hmm. I absolutely need to, I will do whatever I can to avoid it because this type of thing is right. not entertaining to people. <laughs> I mean, somebody might want to calculate out the random number generators of what happens, how many ticks in, or whatever like that. But that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> it's not going to be a lot of people's. So. And I think that's enough for now. Whoa, I just shot. <laughs> I wasted some. Uh, I'm going to save because it's been a while. And I'd like to make sure that I don't have to replay big chunks of it. Oh, 
that's handy. Plus more left to dust. He's a, like a gumball throwing machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it was supposed to be like Wait, that. was that it? Did you kill him? Yeah. Yeah, I killed him. Killed him a few seconds ago. Oh, there's... there's oh, I see. He keeps I really moving. like this. I like this. It, what's what's funny is that you're actually watching the live stream, but yeah, you're no, reacting it's, I know, but I'm, in real time I'm very behind. to what's happening 10 seconds ago. Yeah. And meanwhile, <laughs> it's going to take another 10 seconds before somebody going and watching will actually see you reacting to yeah. that. So you're like 20 <laughs> seconds behind by the time right, that right. happens on, on the stream. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And now we are at a boss. So we should be seeing this boss in a few moments. I have to use Ring, which I just got a bunch of power for. Oh, suck. Oh, well, he's good. I'm going to use one of these energy tanks. Refill my life. I have to use them sparingly, though. So I'm going to save. Finally, finally finish this game. Boom. He just blew up for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm spoiling you as I'm going. Yeah, you're spoiling yeah, I'm getting I'll... constant spoilers. It's like a spoiler every, every yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, now that I've seen you beat that guy, I think I'm going to head off uh, and uh, uh, let somebody else come on here. Sounds good. And uh, finish and up. Laura and Laura is still uh, around, so I will yeah. make sure that I get her in unless somebody else yep. wants to jump on. I'm not sure who it's going to be, so, so uh, but yeah, um, but it was uh, cool hanging out with you, and I will see you at Skepticon, and I will see all the people watching who are going to Skepticon. You, it was great talking to you. Want to come like, come say hi and and uh, uh, in the booth and wave at me sometime? That that's cool because I get it gets pretty boring up in there. So, <laughs> so. I'll I'll make a point of coming and hanging out for at least a little bit at some point. <laughs> Try to break up the monotony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, Thank you very much will, for calling uh, in. No problem. Bye. Have a good one. You too. See if I can get Lauren on.
Hello! Hi, you are not Lauren like I was just bothering. That's great. <laughs> Okay, cool. But, uh, you have to put up with me and my cat. <laughs> kind of having trouble hearing you. I don't think the microphone is actually up. Oh, there yeah, you sorry. Oh, <laughs> Had my uh, microphone up on my head, because I do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So I'm almost, almost done Mega Man 4. Ooh, 4. That four. is further along than I uh, had thought that you would be. Do you doubt me, sir? <laughs> I mean, I... rightfully. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is uh, quite good. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of pleased with my progress so far. I just have to uh, figure out all of these Robot Master's weaknesses again. Uh, this is Drill Man, who is weak against dive missiles. So I'm going to fight him with that. So is there anything that you didn't get a chance to say while you were here last time? Uh, well, I I guess I am just not uh, the most interesting person. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk all day about uh, the uh, very nerdy things that I'm into, but for some reason, if it's something that I actually believe in, I clam up a lot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not a, uh, a great <laughs> quality in somebody that is uh, trying to really convince everyone that you should come to Skepticon. It really is a great thing. Oh, but uh, you've got lots of uh, lots of nerdy things to talk about, too. And, I mean, we haven't shied away from any of that. We've talked about your, your Tandy ownership. So, yeah. <laughs> surely, uh, tell me about some of your hobbies. How's that? Oh, for hobbies, I do a lot of board gaming and every once in a while when the mood strikes me I'll make some uh, furniture uh, mostly like outdoor furniture and I make it too complicated like with raising and lowering backs and try to put like adjustable footstools on it and it just gets so ungodly heavy oh my word I had to have two people move a small two-person bench that I made that it I like how it looks but it's just so heavy <laughs> it doesn't save me any money at all <laughs> it just uh, I like doing it oh man uh, I'm gonna have to use another energy tank here otherwise I'm gonna die you finally got your uh, slide. Yeah, I finally have slide. Yeah, I was it was really hurting when I was going through quick man stage. I really wish that I could have slid underneath some of those beams, but here we are. I have my slide and I can move quickly sometimes. Is that the uh, hail of bullets? Uh, there's, uh, there's a few weapons in this one, like, uh, Toad Man's Rain Splash that causes an acid rainstorm that covers the entire screen. That, that was this guy's vulnerability, but he actually takes more hits than you have energy to be able to throw out there, and so you invariably have to hit him a few times with your buster no matter what. Yeah. The more I watch of you playing this, the more I realize it has been a really long time since I played these games. <laughs> Makes me uh, want to get my emulator going again. Always a good time. Yeah, I have uh, been thinking about uh, making a little uh, NES emulator out of a Raspberry Pi and just setting it up next to my uh, TV. Yeah, that's, um, that's worthwhile. Um, I did something like that for work. Uh, and there are a number of people at work who are gamers, and we have a, a TV in the conference room, and I set up a Raspberry Pi with an emulator, a couple of emulators, uh, using RetroPy, the uh, RetroPy distribution of Raspbian, yeah. which, which works quite well. Set it up with a controller, plug it into the HDMI on the TV, People enjoy it. 
or yeah that. I've done that a couple of times just never for myself right usually uh, it has when I'm doing anything with a Raspberry Pi or little microcomputers it seems like it is I'm trying something out for work because we've tried several times to use like thin clients through a uh, Raspberry Pi mm. and the Google apps just seem to crash so I when it comes right down to it when I come home I don't want to touch that stuff so I almost wish I worked on a little more uh, mundane equipment <laughs> what uh, what kind of equipment do you work with primarily at work it really depends on my boss's mood to be completely honest I've got a bunch of Raspberry Pis in my desk right now that were from a failed uh, project trying to turn them into thin clients with a uh, with a little bit of application layer on them and then we switched over we're switching over to like uh, little uh, chrome boxes now oh okay. those are those are super simple to work with so it's like not even a big deal but is this for uh, end users uh, well it's mostly for most of the company assets are in a centralized server and we just use um, SSH clients with uh, a little bit of a, a mock graphical layer that we've made over the years uh, sitting on top of it That's so cool. that everybody just logs into the central server. So a terminal services kind of, sort of? Kind, yeah, kind of. It, it just depends on what application they're doing at the time and what department. <laughs> Because cool. it's, you know, it's work. Nothing can ever be simple. Because <laughs> this department has to have that, and that one has to do that. Yeah. I work at a website hosting company, and, you know, we can't have a standard website template. There's got to be three or four dozen yeah. types of technology in play at any one time. <laughs> There's no such thing as simple. But, I mean, I actually enjoy it. Um, if it were for the fact that I was being presented with different puzzles, I would have gotten bored a long time ago. Yeah. That is one thing I do miss about uh, the freelancing and the last company I worked with. I was able to jump through projects really quickly. And the company I'm working for now, I have a hard time working on projects that are less than six months. And I kind of miss the short ones. Hmm. Yeah, the ones that you can actually get that sense of completion when you're done. Right, yeah. It's I love being able to look at something as a finished product, and it's much harder these days. <laughs> I love being able to look at something as somebody else's problem to support thereafter. Right. <laughs> it, it almost never happens, but uh, like once, once I've touched a thing, suddenly it's my baby. That's okay yeah. too. It's good as far as you know from a, a work permanence standpoint. Yeah, job security is not a problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, know what you mean. We've got uh, the same kind of operation at, at my company. I have a feeling that anybody that works in IT has that going on because we all have our own strange little projects that made no sense for anybody else. Right. <laughs> but somehow, we end up with it. I've died a bunch of times and I haven't been counting. I don't know. Let's just add one more, sure. <laughs> but um, the ones with the really quirky technologies underneath, those are always the most rewarding to get working, I find. Yeah. My... F favorite is when you're told that it will not work going in and then you figure it out oh, it's yeah. just because you working, seem like a genius right it's like working in IT there's only two modes oh my god I'm going to be fired and I am a god <laughs> pretty much it's like oh well today is not one of the good days <laughs>
What's that? Aussie man? <laughs> With the boomerang? <laughs> that's a that's a harmful stereotype. Thank you. You're thinking of Quick Man. <laughs> Quick Man, okay. <laughs> no, this guy's Ring Man. I, I don't understand. He's got he's got like a ring on his head. That's his thing. That's it, it's yeah. a fashion statement, I guess. I don't know. I'm not gonna judge him for it. I have tried. I used to own a boomerang, and I kept hitting myself in the head. I really wanted to be better at that. That seems like a uh, pretty uh, good weapon for him. Maybe that's a targeter that he's got on his head. <laughs> Must be. I'm really contemplating using this. I might as well. I've already died a couple times. I gotta keep a couple in reserve, though, for later on. Oh, I'm out. Oh no, I should have been able to reload. <laughs> so, of the games that you've played so far, which is your favorite? Which of the uh, Pac Mans? <laughs> the Pac Mans. The Mega or, Mans. <laughs> Mega Mans. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's um, gonna. <laughs> not gonna get to like go very quick, I'm sure. Nope. <laughs> you, you like the Pac-Mans, do you? I like the Pac-Mans. <laughs> so, I uh, I have a good deal of fondness for Mega Man 2. Uh, it Two. doesn't have a lot of the uh, quirks of the newer ones, like being able to charge up your buster or sliding, but overall, it is the most polished of all of the games. Uh, and its difficulty level is just about right there in the sweet spot, where it's difficult, but not maddeningly so. Um, yeah. It's widely regarded as the best one. Um, and I would tend to agree with that particular assessment. That's my assessment as well. On to the last boss of the uh, area. Last of the repeats. And I believe I can use Drill against this guy. No, this is... Wait, that was Feral Man. I can use Bright. Okay. Oh yeah, this guy. I gotta wait for him to actually land. And it's not very useful if I keep getting him off the ground. Drill. Gotta love the uh, very straightforward naming convention for weapons. Oh, I actually got him with him off the ground. That's awesome. <laughs> I win. Oh, my thumbs are hurting. <laughs> I don't know why. 11 <laughs> hours, 13 minutes? That's... <laughs> it's a little ridiculous, and I'm not doing this kind of thing again. I'm gonna break it up. <laughs> yeah, do a uh, little 20-minute uh, Farmville break in between. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what all real gamers play in the, uh... Although I have to say, it's not a bad game for just wasting time. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I will never begrudge somebody a time waster game. Yeah, I've got a couple of them on my, um, phone. It is not my particular choice, but it... It's not bad. Ooh, oh, my thumb is going to be blistered, I can tell. <laughs> Why can't you work, Jason? Well, because I'm going to go. We can't. <laughs> I was going to just... Not say what you were doing, say, oh, I was uh, volunteering to, uh, you know, do this thing, and, you know. Yeah, it was just But your thumbs? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I don't think that would work with uh, my boss. <laughs> Be funny to try, though. Uh, yeah, I would. There's a lot of things I would like to try, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> when it comes right down to it, I'm like, no, no, can't do it. Real. Oh, come on. Really? Alright. Use another one. Which leaves me with one for the last boss. And then you'll be on the fourth one. Are you gonna get very far in the fifth? Or are you uh, going to just cut it off at uh, 12 hours? I am planning on cutting it off at 12 hours because that's what I signed up for. But at yeah. the same time, I don't know. I kind of miss the opportunity to prove that I'm good enough, smart enough, fast enough. Doggone it, people like me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, it's not a bad way to uh, spend a Sunday. Going down uh, Nostalgia Lane with a favorite game. Oh, this is sucking hard. I don't know <laughs> if I can actually beat him at this point. I can't get high enough to hit him with the drill. I'm supposed to use drill now. I don't know of any weapons that I can actually get that high. I know what I do. I have to rush Jet. I can. It's gonna be close. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh. Boo. How do I beat him? Man, I used to own this game. I did this for real as a kid. That was. Yeah. not working. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> I really don't. I don't think I have weapons anymore. Starting over is uh, not an option. No, definitely not. <laughs> Go a little far back. Oh. I'm sore too. Maybe I should look up his weaknesses is what I should do. Well, while you do that, I'll just mention that something that people can do if they're interested is they can uh, look up some of the uh, Skepticon, those the previous years at skepticon.org slash videos. Oh, definitely. You can, if you have uh, gotten your Mega Man fill for the day in another 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little bit of taste of what it is all about. And there are links to several of the uh, talks from the past, which are pretty interesting, to be completely honest. And... You can just see how much worth your time it would be to stop by and come to a Skepticon. I hate to say this, but I think it's actually impossible. I'm looking at a boss strategy over here, and um, they're able to actually hit Wily from the ground with the Buster, and I think the emulator is not emulating the ground properly because it's not flickering the way that it is on my screen. Oh. Which makes me think that I'm actually a little bit too low. That, that is, uh, that is stinky. It might actually not be possible in this emulator to beat this guy. 
<laughs> oh, that would be just very sad. Well, I, just for the sake of argument, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the Game Genie code for infinite life, and I'm just going to keep trying to hit him over and over again just to see if it's even possible. <laughs> I realize that is definitely cheating and definitely going against the spirit of this, but you know what? I need to know if it's even feasible at this point. I do not want to have spent the past three hours not being able to get this <laughs> this last this last boss. Yeah, sometimes the emulators are just so close, but the tiniest little bit. I had a uh, emulator for my uh, Xbox that I was playing games on, and everything, the timing on everything was just wrong. Everything was either too fast or too slow. <laughs> it, it was games that I'd played, played so many times. And I don't know why that is, because an Xbox is just a tiny computer. <laughs> Pretty much. Remember, uh, tried playing one of my favorite games, Knights of the Old Republic, the original one. Oh, okay. The I played MMO? that through. Yeah, I played that through so many times on the original Xbox that. Oh man, I could just go through it almost in my sleep, but I could not get past like I think it was level three, the Kashyyyk on uh, the emulator just because the timing was so off huh. it went from everything attacking so fast that you couldn't track it to being so slow that it's like they were not they had like a rounding error or something it was awful that is pretty awful um, this was on you were emulating the the uh, xbox yes yeah. okay and the Xbox wasn't that old yet, so I'm sure there are better emulators out there now. But that really put me off for a while. I didn't try another em the new Nintendo because I had to get my Mario fixed. <laughs> I entered the code for from Mega Man 3 instead of 4. Um, I didn't really have these on hand, so I'm kind of looking for for them on the fly. Don't take damage from bad guys. Like, that's a... I think that means you can still die by insta-death means, I guess? I don't know. Uh, first I'm going to delete that other Game Genie code. Uh, Did you own the uh, Game Genies that you uh, used for the cartridges? <laughs> Um, I think near the end of its life cycle, I actually did end up getting a Game Genie at, like, a yard sale. Um, but I didn't really have much opportunity to use it, because I think at about that point, that was when the Super Nintendo came out. And then I ended up selling my entire Nintendo library, as well as doing yard sales and stuff, in order to be able to afford a Super Nintendo. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I did, too. When I got my, uh newer system, I got rid of the old one and I've kicked myself ever since. <laughs> now, I uh, am going back and rebuying some of the old platforms that I had, just to have them in my living room. And the ones I had were in much better shape. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this does it. If I die now, I died. It didn't work. I believe in you. Um, I could also do a mega jumping. That would help. That would get you up to where you need to shoot at. Yeah, um, considering that this is actually like an emulation failure, um, I don't consider that cheating. I hope nobody else does. <laughs> uh, I'm going to... Uh, apparently Lauren's back to be able to finish out the, the rest of the show. If you want to split... 
Perfect. Okay. Well, it was nice to uh, get here for the last few minutes, and I will let uh, Lauren finish out the uh, day. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's get Lauren on here. You know what? We're going to finish this game. I don't care if I have to go a little bit over time. We're going to finish it because we need that extra $25. And I don't think Alex is going to mind if I go a little over 12 hours considering. <clears throat> yes, hello. Hello. Oh, that's a, that's a great dinosaur hat. <laughs> You know, I figured if I was going to be here to end this damn thing, I ought to wear something fancy. Right. You know, yeah. wear your best Sunday go Sunday clothes. Oh! <laughs> so, get this. Um, yes. There might be an emulation problem with this particular emulator that makes it impossible for me to finish this game. It's not <gasps> possible for me to get high enough to be able to shoot the last boss where I need to shoot him. Uh... Because the floor is, like, glitchy and slightly... So I'm going to add a cheat that is oh, awful no. of me. I'm going to add a cheat that makes me jump higher. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> because uh, I'll be damned if this beats me. <laughs> I, um, well, uh, I would say go with God, but that's kind of useless in the situation. Uh. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. You're welcome. I'm helpful. I'm helpful. Yay. <laughs> like... <laughs> I had to put the headset on underneath this dino hat, so it's very tight on my head. <laughs> uh, who, need, who needs thoughts, anyway? <laughs> who needs to think? Holy Yay. crap, yeah, okay, the mega jump really works. I really jump up there. Nice. Go, Jason. It's your birthday. It's really not. It's that's factually incorrect. It's, it's just like, uh, what you know, some uh, encouragement. That's the word I'm looking for. It's just encouragement. I am encouraging you. Such encourage. I am encouraged. You know how many encouragements I have right now? All of them. Two million encouragements. <laughs> You're very silly. Uh, I'm very tired. Holy crap. Oh, hey, my uh, don't take damage is also working. <laughs> okay, now I'm really not in the spirit of this game. I'm going to disable the don't take damage right now. Oh. Because that's one cheat too many. Listen, you got like... You got like 30 minutes. Yeah, I... What you're saying is I really should just cheat my way through. <laughs> What, what I'm saying is, you should just get with the program and make this game happen. Get to the end. Right. Make it your goal, right? If Sir Alex wants to um, talk about, debate or not, about whether or not you use too many cheats, we can get to that later. <laughs> we can have words. We can have words. More than one. Maybe even two words. Three words? Which or... words are they going to be? <laughs> the best ones. <laughs> I have a lot of words. I have the best words. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you were the English major. You're supposed to be the one with the words. I don't care how tired you are. <laughs> uh, I'm concentrating on the boss. So talk to me about things. About how okay. awesome Skepticon is going to be. Skepticon is gonna be so awesome. I really cannot wait. I mean, I can because I have a lot of crap to do between now and then. And by crap, I mean just like a lot of email writing and like coordinating and man, so many emails. Conference organizing, I think from the outside because people only see you that weekend. People think it's like really exciting, really sexy work. It's like, no, um, I sit in front of my computer a lot like a lot. <laughs> like a, a lot. <laughs> That's like, kind of... Like my doctor is telling me to maybe move around more. Yeah, like... I need to go outside, apparently. Sun is good for you. Like vitamin... Vitamin D! So... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, the vitamin D? <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I can't manage to say that normally. I just can't. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, conference organizing, it's just a lot of people working away at things that are not, by and large, like, wildly exciting or interesting. Like, having a prom is awesome, but all of the little nuances that make having a prom is not that exciting. You know, coordinating a conference, not that exciting. Being at a conference, super hella exciting! I have to say, I'm mm -hmm. excited to be there. I'm looking forward to it a good deal. I am glad. We've got a lot going for this year. We've got, you know, we're reintroducing panels. Prom's always fun. We've got a bunch of great speakers lined up who have like, oh, such great talks to look forward to. Indeed. Yeah. Admittedly, I don't get to watch the talks uh, in person because I'm too busy. Uh, running around and making sure things are not on fire. <laughs> so I'll have to wait until they're on YouTube with everybody else before I can watch them, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I should probably turn off the mega jumping now. That mega through, jumping! Through the area that was impossible to get past because I was what? <laughs> I, I was frustrated enough that I went and looked at a video walkthrough of how to do this and dude was just like jumping up there and shooting him. That was it. That was his entire strategy and I kept trying it and oh. it did not work. So clearly there was a f emulation flaw because the floor was flashing on my emulator in a way that it was not on the walkthrough. So uh, uh, ah. I tried a playthrough in advance to know that but Emulators. Oh. Yeah, I know. Should be playing it on real hardware if I was a real gamer. Um, should we be talking about ethics in video game journalism? We should definitely be talking about ethics. <laughs> video <laughs> game journalism is not not a thing. That's literally just reviews and people who don't like it when you give things reviews. That's what that is. I have opinions. Do you have a review on this live stream? You gonna share it with us? Uh, Skepticon's pretty cool. Mega Man's are fun. The Mega Men's. What about the Mega Men? The Mega Men. What about the Mega Men? With the, with the him fighting what Rock Man and <laughs> Spout Man and Top <laughs> Man <laughs> and Bottom Man <laughs> and, and and Bottom Man. <laughs> <laughs> Strange man, up down, up man, down man, <laughs> charm man. A man, B man, A man, B man, start select man. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Yeah! Yeah! Good times. You actually know the Konami code. Ha ha ha. You've just proven yourself a true geek. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? I think we both know I'm already a geek. There's nothing to like chortle and be like, meh, nerd, because yes, I am a nerd. Okay, I'm wearing a dinosaur hat and I organize a conference. <laughs> like, I'm I mean, this is all empirically true, however, you present yourself as less of a nerd, which is hilarious to me because I know you are one. <laughs> Listen, I'm. Shh. <laughs> I'm I'm a secret nerd? I don't know. I don't think I deny my nerddom. Uh, she says, like, two seconds after denying her nerddom. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not I just, just coming out like... of this with nowhere. I'm not fake geek girling you. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, I, just, I, I am nerdy, but not the nerdiest. <laughs> I guess I could be nerdier. I could strive to be nerdier. You could. Could you? Do it. Right now. Uh, that sounds like work, and uh, I got a full plate right now. I'm good. It's Thanks. true. It's true. I've got this uh, one last boss to fight. Oh, I'm getting nervous. We're getting close to 10 o'clock. It's making me nervous. I know, and I've got to grind out to get some weapon energy because there's no way I'm going to be able to beat him without it. So oh, wow. I hate okay. this. Okay. 
Oh, I don't need extra lives. I've got infinite lives. God. So, should I or should I not, like, remind you of how much time is left incessantly until it's 10 o'clock? No, that's totally a good idea. That, that's a great use of your time and mine. I think, I think that will alleviate a lot of the stress here, I'm sure. Yeah? I'm sure it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll be less stressful? Smooth things along, it'll grease the skids, so to speak. Oh, the skids. What? Yeah. The, the skids oh, are the gross. the skids. Ew. <laughs> Is that what you find in your underpants sometimes? Correct. Um. <laughs> False. This is this is a malicious rumor. <laughs> uh Okay. <laughs> uh, there's no better place to get energy right now. This is literally the only place to do this. This is awful. I... Where are you getting energy? Shooting these little bad guys over and over again. You can't even see it. You, you see gotta do. do. No, I'm, I'm not watching this stream. Nope. No, Just talking to you. That's for the Having best. A, okay. Heart to heart. Real. Yeah. Heart to heart. Real talk. Figuring it out, you know. So real talk, what are you going to do if I actually fail and don't beat this game? Um... And cry? Yeah. That's definitely what I'm going to do. Okay. No, I'll probably just give you a bunch of shit about it, honestly. <laughs> what kind of gamer are you? <laughs> yeah, like, really? You only had one boss and, like, you had like, half an hour and you couldn't do it? Really? <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that, that'd be about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds fair. That seems that seems reasonable. I think it's reasonable. Okay, let's give this a shot. You can do it. Do 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 do. Yeah, you got this. I I just I just you're quiet and you're pressing buttons. I don't know what's happening. It's okay, I'm concentrating. It's all good. Oh, okay. So I shouldn't be loud and annoying right now. Totally should. That's the best thing to do. I don't believe you. No, that would suck. Don't do that. Okay. Well. You can tell me good things about Skepticon. I mean, we've <laughs> talked about it quite a bit. We really have, and I'm not sure what else there is to say other than thank you to all of our of our watchers, the watchers of the stream, and thanks again many times over to yourself for like making your hands cramp and playing video games for forever to help us raise some money. And I hope everyone comes to the con or watches the con in November. Uh, Skepticon.org if you want to find out more and stalk us on the internet. In a friendly way, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. Friendly stock. Let's let's not talk about stalking. And stalking There's a stalking. harassment policy. I just want to point that out. Hey! There is a harassment policy. So if you show up, don't be a douchebag. That's basically what it comes down to. And also, don't stalk people. Yeah, stalking is being a douchebag. Kinda, yeah. Way to bring us down. <laughs> No, I just want to point out that this is, like, a thing. It's important. It is a thing. It is very important. <sighs> I'm dying again and again and again and again. Stop. No, you're not allowed. Well, you only have 20 it. minutes. <laughs> There's only 20 minutes, Jason. <laughs> oh, pressure is on. Yep, the yep, struggle yep. is real. Mm -hmm. Wow, this hat is so warm. I think I might wear this, like... When it snows and stuff? If it ever snows? It snows in Minnesota. That's great. In you St. Louis. Right oh, really? Yeah. It's cold in the north? Who would have thought? That's wildly fascinating news. What a crazy random happenstance. Who would have thought? <laughs> oh my god, totally. Oh. Come on. 
Yeah, got him! Woo! <laughs> nice! The struggle was real, though. I believe rough. it. I mean, your poor hands. Your poor, poor hands. I'm gonna take pictures of these and tweak them. My thumbs. Really? And Is it bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm definitely oh. gonna be blistering tomorrow. <laughs> no! Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I I suffer for my art. <laughs> my art being playing somebody else's art. <laughs> but like, okay. I mean, I went to art school, so let's just over intellectualize the shit out of this for a minute. <laughs> it's performance art, but like really meta performance art because you're performing someone else's art. <laughs> Grad school! <laughs> Grad school jazz hands. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, so that is $100 earned from our dear friend Alex for offering to donate $25 per game that I beat. What a man. Yeah. So that makes, on top of the other... 225 that Rebecca told me about. Yeah. It makes $325 that I made in this in this, this run. You done good. That's pretty good. I so really hope that that, guy, that first whoever did the $100 donation isn't like, no, that wasn't for him. God. God oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, suck. we're just going to count it as yes because you, whatever. Yeah. You earned it, damn it. You My ego it. is at stake. Basically. 12 hours of Mega Man. And so I got many the first hours. four games. Oh my god! I when you go to sleep tonight, you're going to be dreaming of Mega Man and Top Man and <laughs> Spout Man. And so <laughs> basically, every other night. <laughs> oh man! Dust Man. Dust, dust man, man is my favorite because he's not actually anything to do with dust. It's more like uh, junk and mangled metal. So he's like Mad Max, man. Yeah, kind of. Max Man. <laughs> oh, Max is spelled with at least at least two X's because it's extreme. Right on. Yeah. I could get down. I I I could uh, I could deal with that. I could live with that. Good. Number twenty-five, Bright Man, created by Yoshitaka Enimoto. Number twenty-nine, Toad Man, Atsushi Otsuka. I'm gonna mangle these Japanese names. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying them. No, really don't. It's bad. Wait, while well, you're ahead. You're done. Mm -hmm. By whoever. Uh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> to the nation of Japan, I do not want an international incident to come out of this game. Having played this, thank you very much for your video games, Japan. Really cool. I appreciate it. They are really cool. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Are you kidding? I'm having a great time. <laughs> Is it wearing your hat? Uh, Chilling. I mean, I don't have very many occasions to wear this, so when I do find one, <laughs> I take full advantage. <laughs> yeah, you mean you don't go out clubbing with that on? Clubbing. So <laughs> okay. Clubbing. First of all, I don't go clubbing. Secondly, no! It's too hot! <laughs> what, you, you're not trying to pull people? Yeah. Pull people? Yes. Mm -hmm. like pull, like pickup artists? <laughs> yeah, I go out and neg dudes. <laughs> totally should. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not a clubber. Oh, still yawning. Oh, goodness. You've made it. Man. Oh, I made it. You gonna, like, ice your hands or something? I should. I should actually count up how many levels there are in all of the games. Oh, yeah. Do it. So, there are six Robot Masters in number one, and eight in two, three, and four. So there's right six, on. eight, eight, and eight. There's... One, two, 
three, four extra levels in number one. There's eight extra levels in number two. There's four extra repeats of the original levels in number three. Plus, you're writing all this down, right? Nope. I'm not. I'm not counting them. I thought you were keeping track. <laughs> I wasn't keeping track all the way through. Uh, after I itemize all of this, maybe I'll go back and, and talk about it. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, okay. But then there's four more levels in Wiley. Uh, and then in number four, there's four levels in Cossack's Castle, and then five in Wiley's because of the extra little mini level. So that's a grand total of a fuckload of robots that I just murdered in the face. <laughs> you just murdered in the face <laughs> did a lot of that today you sure did it's, you uh, sure did it's not cool to create robots that can feel pain I don't know no. why they ever did that well all they do is hurt until they explode oh and that you did a good job thank you I'm sure that you said something very kind to me, but you cut out for most of it. <laughs> oh, no, I said... <laughs> Chelsea uh -huh. says hello, and that you did a good job. I mean, I didn't say that. I'll say it to you now, though. Good job. Hello. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I wonder if anybody actually watched the whole thing. Uh, I know Jim Tegwell was... Was, was in for a fair bit. Yeah, he was, gonna, he was gonna talk about ethics in the chat channel, which is kind of cool. Um, right on. Alex is here. Uh, he oh. is the gentleman who brought Johnny Walker Double Black to Skepticon last year. Uh, uh, that's I a did. man. I, yeah, that's very helpful. I did partake, and he was uh, a real mensch about it. Uh, and a I appreciate mensch. it. Oh my God. He, this is my, my Jewish impression, I guess. I don't know. I say some Yiddish now and again. I get <laughs> verklempt. <laughs> verklempt? That's, verklempt is Yiddish? Yes. I thought it was just a word. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, speaking Yiddish, if you're not actually, you know, ethnic Jew, is probably not so cool. It's probably very appropriate, but I don't know. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so s let's stop doing that then. Yeah. Man. And, um, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that um, Alex is not... Um, unilaterally getting others drunk. Uh, I will make sure to buy him uh, more than one drink at his request and leisure uh, because he's a really cool guy. Uh, he was a cool guy last year when I met him briefly and he's definitely a cool guy for pitching in and motivating me to get through four goddamn games in this 12 hours. Um, That's... Yeah. It, wow. It's big time. It's big time. Wasn't that your goal this morning, though, was to get through at least four? I was going to try, um, and the real kick in the pants was the fact that he's like, 25 bucks last night. 25 bucks per game. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a hell of an incentive right there. Man, well done. $100, $100 doesn't often buy you 12 hours. <laughs> Let's just say. That, yep, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Now, I need to go and ice my fingers and get the hell off the stream. Uh, I'm going to post-process this, and I'm going to make a point of making sure that I actually get it up on YouTube. Okay. Um, and I'll send you the link when it gets there, so you can put it back on skepticon.org. Sounds perfect. Thank you so much again for doing this. We greatly appreciate it, and thanks to everyone who has been watching and participating. Thanks to all of you for joining me. Uh, good night, good luck, etc. Yada yada. Bye. Bye. <laughs>